Welcome, lovers and friends. I am the White Lightning Bear, and <laughs> that black handsome man over there is <sighs> the Zaddy. Ferguson. The Zaddy. <laughs> Don't even start that. <laughs> Don't start that back. <laughs> <laughs> and we are do- joined today by Jamie. How you doing, Jamie? Good. How are you guys doing? We're great. You want me with a little bit? Oh, no. It's okay. It's okay. <coughs> and if you can't tell by all the pictures and, or all the festivities... This is our Christmas episode, so Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Why I feel honored I'm in a Christmas episode. <laughs> and not only are you our Christmas episode, but you're our 20th episode. Oh, wow. wow. So this I'm is the very honored. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what are your plans for Christmas this year? Um, no, that's a tough one. Um, I probably will, might get to see my oldest son, but that's probably about it. Since my divorce, it's been very sketchy as to what, I do on the holidays because it's not the same. And I live in a one-bedroom apartment, so my boys don't come around much like they used to. How old are they? Um, I have 27. Brandon is 23. And my youngest is 22. Um, Girlfriends? Um, Two of them. The two oldest ones have girlfriends. Um. My middle one has had a girlfriend for over a year. I think they've been together now, but my oldest is new. The newest one that I think. Yeah. Now I'm just curious, are they um the type type of boys that uh um they lost track of family because they excited with the girlfriend type of life? Um my oldest actually he's actually been better since he's had a girlfriend. She <laughs> she stays in touch with her mom, so nice, he nice, nice. stays a little more in touch with me. My middle one it doesn't it, he's he stays in touch, um, texting, you know calling each other back and forth, but um, now my youngest, he's in California with his dad, so oh, okay. I have, like, very little contact with him. Gotcha. Haven't seen him in four years, so. How long have you been divorced? Um, it has been since 2016, September 24th, 2016. Okay, so my divorce was in October. Okay. Close to Halloween, which was an important holiday for me and my ex. Um we always went to family parties, Christmas, the same thing. Mm-hmm. You know, every year it was, it was me and hers. And everyone, and when it, I showed up there, I couldn't do Halloween. Halloween, I just couldn't handle. Like, I went there and I just cried. Like, I went outside right. and just cried for hours. Oh. What was your first holiday like Ugh. post-divorce? It was awful. It was, well, the boys, we were, Halloween was always a big one because mm-hmm. We preferred, we actually liked Halloween more than we liked Christmas for the most part. We right. just, the boys would get into it. They liked getting dressed up. I was into it. Um, their dad was into it. So, um, but I think that first Christmas was really, really rough after, because in Maryland, you have to live separate for a year before you can actually be divorced. Mm-hmm. So I had moved out and I was in a studio apartment and uh, they didn't know what to do. Like, they were like, do we just come visit you, Mom? Or, you know, my youngest came and visited me, and um, I went to visit the other two. So it was it was rough, definitely. No, Lots of tears. Yeah. How did this – how did the conversation – how long were you married for? 27 years. After 27 years, how does somebody go about saying, I want a divorce? Well, um, it came to my attention – well, it was a year and a half, basically – straight out. It was a year and a half that we had not had sex. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting on a 25th wedding anniversary. I'm sitting on the beach with, um, we'd gone to Emerald Island with um, Emerald Isle in North Carolina with another family. And Mm -hmm. I was sitting there with my friend Amy. And uh, she said, there's something wrong with this picture, don't you think? She said, this is your 25th wedding anniversary and you're sitting here with me on the beach. 
So which, your, your husband. ex was not there? No. He was um, riding bikes with um, our youngest son, Connor. And uh, I started crying right then and there. And mm-hmm. I told her, I said, yeah, we haven't had sex. I've done everything I possibly could do to try to spark things up again. I suggested going to counseling, um, all that. And uh, he wasn't interested in anything. In fact, um, we were at Deer Park Tavern was the last conversation we had. And uh, I said, I think we really need to go get some counseling. And he said it was too late for that. And shortly after that, I wrote like a five-page letter telling him that this is not okay with me. I'm not going to live mm-hmm. like this. Unbeknownst to me, um, we, we gave the letter, read the letter to the boys, you know, told them, we brought them together, told them we were going to split up. And, of course, they were crushed. But um, my middle son and oldest son both said they weren't surprised. I'm about to say one of the kids shouldn't be yeah, surprised. Yeah, they weren't, you know, they weren't, the youngest was obviously devastated, but the other two were kind of like, we're not really surprised. But, like, I, my ex and I, we never fought. We were always kind of a good team. The, I thought it was we, the energy, though, that they could yeah, feel. Yeah, but they could feel that, I guess. And um, and then I moved out, and one month after I moved out, that's when I found out he'd been cheating on me for um, two years prior to that because his uh, at that point his girlfriend had sent me a, a two-page text explaining to that, you know, she her impression was that I just left him, and um, that's what he told her and let her believe. Mm-hmm. But since then we've talked and she knows that's not how it went down to begin with so um yeah so i moved out and like i said i found out one month after that and then my oldest told me he'd seen them together prior he just didn't know how to say anything yeah so now leading up to this you said there was no sex were you guys still kissing holding hands kind of thing no it was real he was working all the time he was gone like he's a workaholic anyway so i just assumed he was you know, he's at work, but his hours got stranger. They were more mm. in the middle of the night and coming home like at two in the morning. And um, and I remember now, you know, t- hindsight's twenty twenty. You sit back and go, oh, he did get a text from a coworker the, in the middle of the night to come pick him up from a bar that he was drunk and couldn't drive home. Mm-hmm. And I was like, why is he calling you? Because my ex isn't known to have friends. He's kind of a loner. And uh, so I didn't, I was... You know, I think about it now. I had gotten a, that cr- previous Christmas before we decided to break up. I'd gotten a, um, a statement from Discover that there was a Pandora, a $500 Pandora bracelet on the mm. statement. Well, I didn't get that for Christmas. So I was like, oh. what the hell? And I brought it to his attention. He said, oh, it was a mistake. I had gone to, you know, the store. I'd gotten this, and then I returned it. <clears throat> and I was just... I, I don't know if I my head was just in the sand or what. I mean, honestly, I thought the man was gay. I mean, I really did think he was gay. I, I had done everything in my power to try to, you know, spark things up and all that, and I swore um, I, I just thought he was gay. I was like, there can't be. Mm-hmm. But, but people that I worked with at the schools, they were like, no, he's, he's with somebody. There's... No way he's gone this long without having sex. So, so I was kind of the last to know <laughs> that this is what happened. Did you know the woman? I had no idea. No, I didn't know her at all. Never seen her before. And uh, we're in Cecil County, and she was she's black, and uh, he's not. And that was a big thing for my my kids were because they with the school that they went to, it was a big thing. It was people saw them together, and my boys were very upset that, you know, that was an issue for them in the beginning. It's not so much now, but in the beginning, they were so angry, and they are like, he's prancing her around. You know, he'd take her to places that we went to, mm. and he was a coach at the high school, so all the kids knew him, and then, you know, he would bring her to practices and to games and all that, and I was off clueless. I was just working, and... Now, I had no idea any of this was going on. <laughs> now, when it's Cecil County, can you describe to people what Cecil County is? Because a lot of people probably wouldn't know what that is. Just kind of, Well, the term is called Cecil Tucky. It's just a lot of rednecks and, mm-hmm. you know, not um, – it's definitely not a progressive 
place to mm -hmm. live as far as um, forward thinking and, you know, um, let's say that Rising Sun, it's known where the, um, there's apparently when we first moved out there, one of the first things somebody told us when we were at the Christmas parade was that the, um, there's the clan was in Rising Sun and it was a big deal. And we were like, uh, what year is this? This was in 2000 when we moved to, we moved here from Arizona. We moved to uh, Northeast Maryland from Arizona. And it was, a, we were watching the bands come through as Christmas parade. We had just bought our house and uh, everyone was commenting about how, oh, there's a black guy in the Rising Sun band. Do you see that? And we were looking around like, what the heck? Where, where, where did we just move here from? <laughs> you know, where, where, where are we? What's going on here? It was... No. So that's the thinking kind of mindset there. So it wasn't very progressive. Now, why did you move there from Arizona to here? Um, for his job. So let me get this straight. So you grew up in Arizona? Mm hmm Yep. Born All your raised. family's in Arizona? All my family's in Arizona. You left Arizona for this man? Yep. Had three kids with him? Mm-hmm. And you, you said 2006. You were living here for 16 years. Yeah. Two years of that he was cheating on you. So you lived here for 14 years. And then he just decides to start. Do you? So looking back, he started cheating after 14 years of living here, 20 mm. something years being together. Is there a moment that you realize like this is when it started? I don't think there's so much a moment as I think that we were very wrapped up when he started coaching the boys um, lacrosse team. He was very focused on that, and uh, and it was fun. I loved it because mm. I came, you know, I played sports in school, and so I was very supportive of it and loved every minute of it. But I think that what came, what it, we became um, partners in raising kids, mm -hmm. we just became a team. Right. And we always said that we always said we were a good team together. And uh, but the spark, as far as you know, romantic love had had been gone we'd go to dinner and you know not really have anything to talk about except the kids um so it was kind of I didn't know a whole lot about his job as far as I knew what he did but I didn't he didn't discuss a lot with me mm -hmm. um as retrospect she used to work that's what the company he worked for that moved us out here so I found out after the fact that she was working at this, they knew each other so mm -hmm. I think now I have to think after eight years of reflection, did he know she was out here? I mean, had that been something that he always, you know, was interested in her all mm -hmm. this time? Mm -hmm. I don't know. You know? I'll be right back. I need to go grab the beer for this episode. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. So throughout that moment, you, n you never, because you said that you thought he was gay. I did. But, uh, so I, I'm not mad at you for that. I'm not mad at you for that. Because I'm thinking, you know. But you never felt in your heart that he must be cheating? No. Now, never once did that occur Now, to me. I'm curious. I'm so curious. Why not? Uh, why, why was that a denial? In I your head on for that think right? because before we got married, we talked so much about, um, you know, like they used to talk about the seven-year itch, you know. Like you always hear that there'll be a point somewhere in a marriage where, you know, some one of you might get antsy or, you know, start thinking you're missing out on something, you know, because I was 20 when we got married. Wow. And uh, so I was – I hadn't even graduated from college yet, and um, my parents were definitely not – Not for it. Not for it. But um, I think now I kind of think back on it and – yeah, I, uh, I, I, we talked about it. You just, you know, if you ever feel like you're going to cheat on me, if you ever feel like you're going to, you know, it, I just thought he, we would talk about it. We talked all, you know, we talked all the time. It wasn't like we weren't friends. You know what I mean? We were friends, but I never. But you felt he was gay. I did. Hold on, listen to this. So, wouldn't that still be cheating? Yes. But it seemed like you would believe more that he would cheat with you with a guy but not a girl. Right. That was the only confusing part. That you, mm -hmm. It just make, makes me feel at that point you was just in denial that you didn't want to believe it, but you knew it. Right. If no. that makes sense. It could be, yeah. Why would you think he would be gay? Because I was throwing myself at him and, you know, I was trying to, I was tr pulling out all the tricks. 
all no. the stops trying to get, you know, I'm not going to lie. Mm. I was, I wanted to have sex. If <laughs> exactly. <else>. Exactly. <laughs> what, what's ready. one of these tricks that somebody. Pulls? <laughs> <laughs> well, now, you know, <laughs> lingerie, um, just, you know, just being very forward and, mm -hmm. you know, no. Trying to different things. Hey, you want to try something different? You know, that kind of thing, you know. Just I forgot about the beer. <laughs> <laughs> so this beer Thank is you. called Up, Up, and Away okay. from New England. Or no, from 2SP. Should be a sponsor. Okay. And the reason for this is because you moved Up, Up, and Away for somebody. Oh. Oh, okay. There's yeah. a Christmas beer, too, for the season. Season. <laughs> but try the beer. We try a new beer every episode, and Tremaine complained. It could be money, literally. He could be drinking $100 bills, and here you go. Mm -hmm. This strong stinks. It strikes IPA. Definitely an IPA. This yeah. strong stinks. Take a good sip. <laughs> you know, Tremaine, if anyone ever came to us as a sponsor for a beer, <laughs> and all they would have to do is go back and listen to Tremaine complain about it. <laughs> Speaking of complaints... What 1983 action movie did you get those glasses from, bro? Listen, I just... <laughs> Listen, Black I, Tom I, Cruise. I just, I just found these joints, man, because somebody fucking took my joints out of here, man. <sighs> man. <laughs> well, looking cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so your first Christmas was tough. This is... How many Christmases now will this be? Oh, gosh. What? Probably our eighth, my eighth Christmas. Without him? Mm-hmm. And is it still something? It's still, it, well, last year, last few, this year is the first year I've actually put a tree up. Mm -hmm. Let's put it that way. Um, oh, yeah. You know, it's like this year I'm more in the spirit. I'm more, um, I've been watching Christmas movies like crazy. I didn't even watch Christmas music movies <laughs> when the kids were I little. You. you know, <laughs> I, I was you. not interested. And I've been watching them like crazy. So I feel like I've definitely come out of, you yeah. know, that dark cave that i've been in but as far as i think too with boys you know with three boys they're they're used to mom like creating everything and mm -hmm. it being traditional and you know getting everything together um i don't think they really know how to you know do that for themselves and there there's no place for me to do that for them because i don't have a house or you mm -hmm. know yeah. otherwise i'd be inviting them over and exactly. so speaking of the house how did he get the house well one i did a, the dumbest thing that i did and really the only big regret i have is that i i left left the house and people and women that i've taught spoken to since said that was probably the dumbest thing i did was leave the house and um but i didn't we agreed we were going to be amicable we I, we both agreed that um, we would have attorneys, but it wouldn't be we weren't gonna fight for custody of Connor, and he was still underage at the time. And um, I I kind of trusted all that even after everything. I mean, I just yeah. It's so live and learn. I yeah. I really you know you spend that much time with somebody. I mean, he was like. It, you know, you have to remember, uh, he swept me off my feet at 20. I was like, mm -hmm. it was love at first sight. I was very, I mean, I, I couldn't wait for my parents to meet him. And it was, we really only dated for a few months before he proposed. And he proposed to my, he asked my dad, you know, I mm -hmm. mean, he did everything very traditional. And, and I was just, I was swept off my feet. But he was also edgy when we first met and got like married. He, he's like wearing the leather jacket or what do you kind mean? Kind of, <laughs> like he was very, he was much more rebellious than, as soon as we got married, he became very serious and very um, work driven and very focused about, um, I mean, he was a good provider. I can't, you know, mm -hmm. he, pro he de definitely provided for us. So I can't ever fault him for that, but, um, yeah, he lost his edginess as soon as the kids started coming. I think that that's when the kids, when I started having kids, I always wanted to be a mom. He didn't necessarily always want to be a dad. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's where things kind of, you know, his his thoughts of what life was going to be like changed for him. And um, he didn't communicate that with me. You know, mm -hmm. I think that maybe had he, it's not that he didn't love his kids, because, you know, I know he does, but I don't think that he, really 
really wanted all that yeah more than he wanted i mean so. I, I would love to have kids <laughs> right, right ashley yeah. knows that and ashley definitely wants to have kids yes definitely should be um, a good mom yeah this this past christmas like we were talking about christmas earlier i was like i didn't I and mean, christmas is always a big thing for me mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but i i couldn't like i couldn't see a christmas light i couldn't I stayed inside and I just got really drunk and passed out on the floor and cried. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, I know that that's feeling. What, that's what mm-hmm. I did. I yep. was like, I was like, hopefully this will kill me. That would yep. be the best thing to happen to me. Um, yep. But I did celebrate Thanksgiving that year, and Thanksgiving was is a huge holiday in my family. Mm-hmm. I went there and I just kind of like sat outside and cried for a little bit, then went back in, and people still were like, "Hey, where's we call my ex the whore here because we can't say names." Right. Yeah. I They're got like, "Hey, that. where's the whore?" And I was like. I would just walk away. People were like, what the hell happened? With, what's going on with him? Oh, the whore left. And people were like, no, she did it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they didn't see it coming, but that bitch did. Wow. She definitely did. Yeah. Um, the holidays are, are super hard. I And, you know, I was telling you one month after I moved out, I found out about his fiance. Well, it ended up being his fiance. He did propose to her. And, um, yes. <laughs> and <laughs> the look on your face. Yes, he did propose to her. How long after he... You guys split up. Um, sh- that was like right away. She she came to our divorce hearing in sept- uh, September um, 24th of 2016, and she she already had a ring on her finger. So he he had proposed to her, and um, she the, she ended up breaking off the um, engagement because he wanted to move to California, and she her kids were here. And she wasn't going to move to California. Now, that's got to feel good. Mm-hmm. That's got to be like, I moved from Arizona <laughs> to Maryland, is it? Yeah, to Maryland. To Maryland for you. And then the woman you left me for wouldn't even. California is a great place. Right? Yep. A part of Cal- like a nice part of California? He's in San Diego. He was in La Jolla area when he first moved out there. This now guy's, he's in San Diego. This guy's a fucking idiot. Mm-hmm. What a <laughs> fucking idiot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he went through like. Four or five different um, women. She stayed in touch with him. That's mm-hmm. how I even know any of this stuff is because she, I think she had a change of heart about me mm-hmm. at, over the years. And she was really good to my kids when, you know, they were around. And um, I didn't have any beef with her when it came to them. She was good. She celebrated Christmas with them and, you know, did things for them. And, um, but she, she stayed in touch with my ex all this time. And uh, even now, he's married. He's remarried, and she's in Jamaica. Now, did she ever apologize to you? She she did apologize to me um, through a text that she was sorry that she she was sorry that what she was told was not the truth. Mm-hmm. And but she didn't know. She didn't. You know, she believed him too and trusted him. Mm-hmm. And now we both agree that he's a little off his rocker. And um, you know, he just went berserk. And um, she said the last conversation I had with her about a month ago, and she said he's just looking. He just wants to be loved. And I'm like, well, he had it. <laughs> <laughs> that's what, that's what everyone mean, says about my ex. Like, she had it. Lost. I mean, people are just so fast to throw away shit nowadays. Yeah. It's crazy. I'm, Happy because I have Ashley and I love her very much. Right. And she's giving me the middle finger right now. <laughs> and I'm going to be shoving that up her ass later. <laughs> uh, let's get into the Bitches Be Crazy clip of the week. Got your back, back. Bitches be crazy. Bitches, bitches, bitches be crazy. Crazy. Bitches be crazy. Bitches, bitches, bitches be crazy. Got your back, Jack. Bitches be crazy. What are you doing? I'm recording you. I see that. Did you put her to sleep? Yeah, I did. You did? Good. She had such a great birthday. She did. You're such a great dad. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not done passing out gifts either. Uh, A gift for me? Vernon, you don't have to do that. It's not for my birthday. Such a great mom. Oh, thank you. I had to. It's heavy. Ooh, I'm excited. You're gonna love it. What is it? Open it up. Oh my God, you are such an amazing man, I tell you. Open it up. Is it Valentine's Day all over again? Their daughter's birthday. It's a joyous occasion. He got her a present. What a nice guy. Ooh, it's that kind of night, ain't it? (laughs) My favorite wine? You're gonna love it. It goes with the gift. Ooh, peanut noir. Mwah. I can't wait to sip on this. Thank you, babe. Oh, 
here we go, here we go. I'm excited. It better be the necklace I'm wanting. You know I've been wanting that for a long time. Another bag. You're so tricky, I tell you. Babe, really? Another bag? She's so inventive. <laughs> you I know, I'm really sure. <laughs> oh my God. You are one silly man, I tell you. This guy's good. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god, what is this? <laughs> what a fun day. Oh man. How could it Duct change? Duct tape, really? They ran out. You're such an amazing rapper. They ran out. I'm sorry. An envelope? What could this be? It's not a necklace. What could this be? It's not a necklace, guys. It's not shaking. It's not my necklace, I don't right. think. <laughs> Let's open this out. Ooh, it feels kind of thick. Okay, hold on. It may be. Maybe. Pape? Ooh. This better be a ticket to Dubai for two weeks <laughs> straight round trip. Wow. Because you know I've been wanting to go to Dubai. On their daughter's birthday. Open it up. Great present. Wow. <laughs> yeah, read it. Ooh. What does it say? What is this? You know what it is? She changed her mood. I just want you to know that I know. <laughs> the day is not mine. Oh my God! She's not my daughter. Why did you do this tonight? Out of Why? Cause I wanted you to know that I know the day is not mine. I've had doubts. What so I went that DNA test. The day is not mine. She's not my daughter. Why would you do this? <laughs> wow. She loves you though. Why would you do this? She's not my daughter. Why would you do this? Why would you cheat? I didn't cheat. Oh, you cheat on me. I didn't. That's proof right there. <laughs> right. DNA test. Nevaeh is yeah. not my daughter. But babe, really? Out of all days, you had three years to give this to me. Now you want to give this to me? All right, well, listen. You and Nevaeh got to the end of the month to get out of my house. Wow. You're kidding, right? I'm not wow. kidding. But you that's your daughter. your daughter had to the end of the month to get out of my house. But that's Kelly. your daughter. It's not my daughter, Kelly. Yes, it is. The paperwork says it's not my daughter. Why would you do this? I am not the father. No. <laughs> Stop, baby. Can wow. we just talk? Get the camera out my face. Can we just talk? Get it out. That man yes. is a fucking hero, an yeah. American treasure. Yes. He waited all day. He's like, I'm going to wait till the end of the birthday Damn, party. Skippy. Now, Damn, that girl. is... I mean, it's just... <laughs> Oh, that's Drink delicious. That. Oh, man. Now, oh, that just that felt so good. Now, do you wish you had a moment like that where you could have been like, I know you're cheating. Get out of my house. Oh, I totally wish I had that oh, moment. Man. I, I, I missed that whole moment. Yeah. Being I, able to. Oh, there's so many people him. that go through breakups where they're like, I wish I would have had the balls mm -hmm. to do what that American hero did. Soldiers dying overseas don't have as much balls as this motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. kidding, guys. Clearly, relax. <laughs> but holy shit, that dude's a fucking hero, and I yeah. love him. Now, Tremaine. That took a lot. That, <laughs> how, like, you got anything to say with those cool glasses? <laughs> um, <laughs> I like that. Um, I like that a lot because um, he wasn't disrespectful and still made sure his... Now, he knew that wasn't his daughter, but he made sure, because she thinks that's daddy, made sure she had a great birthday. You feel yeah. Me? So, right. that's respectful, you feel me, to the mm -hmm. end. But he just obviously got the DNA test coming in, and now he knows. So, it obviously, it was around birthday time. So, I think he did everything correctly. Uh, that was just so... And it was caught on camera. So, like... Yeah, yeah exactly. So, the little girl, as she grows up... Yeah. She's gonna know that. exactly She's because gonna know exactly. because the hardest part is is that don't get it fucked up. Like if she truly didn't know, then I think that whole thing would have been different. Mm -hmm. But he's saying you you and your daughter gotta leave because she knew the whole time that he wasn't a dad, and you were just saying that because I'm a good nigga. You taking all my money and this mm -hmm. and that, and not like he is not a good father or nothing. But he why is he deter why should he take care of your kid? When you know personally as a woman that that's not his kid, but mm -hmm. you're just trying to take advantage of him. That's yeah. fucked up. So I, I just mm -hmm. love it. That's one of my favorite videos mm -hmm. I've ever, like, I play a lot of videos on here. Mm -hmm. A lot of, like, you know, I play a lot of good stuff. Tremaine no, enjoys, don't. I try a lot, play a lot of good videos. <laughs> you should have saw the last one. Nope. Uh -oh. 
That was the most disgusting. I, sh- I showed like sound. Do you know what sound? Oh my is? god, no. that is the most. Don't want to know. You really I don't, don't want to know. know. I turn lifetime. I you show a lot know. of good things on here. Go watch the old clips. <laughs> oh. If you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, you miss all the good stuff. Um, oh, sounding so is when. Oh, Jesus, Tremaine, joy, oh joy. <laughs> so say, this is the top of a penis head, correct? <laughs> right. Okay. No. And it goes through. Mm. Okay. All the way back to like your uh, what do you, what do you call that? Uh, babe, what's the name? It's called uh, the uh, <laughs> not the sphincter. I don't know. Prostate. So you go all the way to the prostate. Okay. You can either warm it up, you can cool it down. Whatever oh, you're in. Wow. I think me and Tremaine agree that warming it up would probably be better for <laughs> the prostate and the penis, right? <laughs> I don't want to talk about this. Like this is fucking my head up. Like it's so gross. Uh, <laughs> sounding first came from uh, we had a sex therapist on here, and that oh. conversation came up. Ashley, did you bring it up or did Ashley brought it up? Uh, and then after that, I was like, well, we have to dive into this. We don't really need to talk about it no more. I feel like <laughs> we can talk about bothering. anything. Else. Okay, that we we did the fairies where you know people with mascots were having sex. Oh, super hot people married a woman married the Eiffel Tower, and then we have this video. So <laughs> basically, on the same like playing field, they're both. Well, this is even the, Steven I like, Seagal. I like these types of videos. Oh, you like this one? Nothing else you showed me. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh man. So uh, later we're gonna get on what the fuck white people. And this is gonna be another good one. that trains a lot. I'm sure. <laughs> now, uh, oh. you divorce your husband, and during a divorce, sometimes kids will pick sides. Mm-hmm. Did that happen in yours? Well. <sighs> I wouldn't say they like totally well. My oldest definitely picked sides. Mm-hmm. Cole was very, but he'd seen them together. And so you're saying he, he picked knew, your side, and he's totally 100. percent I mean, he won't talk to his dad. Mm-hmm. Very, very small increments, and um, but I think there was a sense of your mom. You're supposed to keep things together. Mm-hmm. They were very, and I went off the rails. Not even gonna lie. After Mm -hmm. divorce, I was I had a rebound boyfriend who was, you know, Ashley can tell you he was a mess. Baby, come tell us about him. (laughs) Ashley's sitting off camera right now with uh, Cash. By the way, Cash has his own little uh, Christmas ornament here. Our house is basically like a you know you know back in the day the pyramids they had like a somebody would like somebody (laughs) be buried in the pyramid and you know there's a lot of pictures. That's what our house is. Everything's Everything basically for cash. There's a light outside that's cash. There's, it's all cash. So. Can't do this hat. Okay. Bah no. humbug. Ashley's bah been through humbug. this whole process with me I feel like because I'm really high up and I don't like it. Well. <laughs> so tell us about Jamie's rebound boyfriend. That was fun. What a rush. Did you talk about how Jamie and I know each other? No. Okay. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Anyway, <laughs> we used to work together. So. Yeah. Okay. And we've been friends for like, like right five after years, my six di- years. After yeah. I was divorcing yeah. or while I was I met separated. her right after that. Yeah. yeah. So she's freshly knows everything that went on and has gone on. Cash is looking at us. That's why we're all staring. Yeah. He's, <laughs> he's connected to the table, so I just don't want him to pull it really uh, hard. Oh. My laptop's over all there. All right. Just, give, just tell us about her rebound boyfriend. Um, so he was something that, or someone that she had known in her past, and he didn't really like me very much because I would tell her not to be with him because <laughs> he didn't treat her very well. Right. So he would, like, message people, like, her friends on, like, Facebook and stuff and go under, like, different names. I had to block a few of his yeah, names. Block, yeah, because yeah. he would, like, I don't remember what he would even say. He would just That's be, like, stupid stuff. Yeah, he would, like, threaten to, like, he was, like, I'm going to tell, uh, my then, uh, boyfriend that you're cheating on him and I was like go yeah. right ahead I'm not so right. like he would just like say he was going to ruin my life because I was telling her not to be with him and stuff like that. He was a drama starter? Oh very much mm-hmm. so. And he he was, loved the drama. And he was what in his 50s at that point? Oh yeah. He, I was going to say he sounds like a young guy now. <laughs> we knew each other he was like um, so second grade he mm-hmm. was like my first crush. Did you guys yes. kiss in second grade? Or? In second grade that was my <laughs> first kiss all that. I was going to be Mrs. All this kind of stuff. Don't say names. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just say second grade guy. Second grade guy. Second grade guy. We were going to be all that. So I looked him up as, as soon as I knew things were, weren't, mm-hmm. you know. My Stop. ex and I. <laughs> <laughs> my ex and I had um, given the boys a letter and all that. Well, then I t- took a flight to Wyoming. 
to go see second grade guy and have a seven days of just massive crappy dirty filthy sex <laughs> <laughs> and, and that was I the did. first sex you had in in two years oh wow. two years waiting for sex <laughs> mm-hmm Ashley so can't was... go 12 hours. She, <laughs> <laughs> if I go 12 hours of having sex with her, she thinks I'm gay. So, <laughs> yeah, we had talk. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yes. I need a monster in the house at all times because I need to be ready. <laughs> yeah, uh, I have a little bit of a. I have that kind of sex drive, and after that time, I had totally. I just like I told you, I went off the rails. I was all about that. Yeah, and, I did that when I. Broke up with my ex. I know, okay, well, when I broke up with my ex, I did. I didn't do. I didn't go to Wyoming. Uh, <laughs> if you don't know, we we're filming this in Pennsylvania. She lives in Maryland, so Wyoming's a little bit away. There's actually yes. a Wyoming in Maryland, I think. Is there we're not Wyoming? Talking about that. We're talking about Wyoming, Wyoming, where the deer and the antelope play, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to knock your beer over. It's great. And <laughs> uh, but I went on like. Like the day after she said she wasn't happy, I basically went on a dating app because I knew she was cheating, and I just needed to put my feelers out there. But I didn't even do anything for like the first like three or four months. I just cried mm-hmm. basically the whole time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then after like four months, I was like, "She's out fucking somebody," so I need to do the same. Right. So I just cash. I'm talking. <laughs> Daddy's talking. So I'm stuck to the table. So um, yeah, I just went out and. How would you, how, what's the polite way to say? Bang, 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 the bang, sit, bang, 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 the bang. And I banged the drum a few times, you know, uh, different drums, big drums, little drums, small drums, round drums, whatever drum I could find that my dick would, you know, bounce off of. I basically did that. And then I found my favorite drum, the Ashley drum. I got some good drums. She, Ashley's got some trombones, bro. That's not a drum, but you know. Yeah, that's to say. Oh, Actually, oh, geez. today's a Christmas episode. Yes, I'm aware. Could you sing us like a Merry Christmas no. song? <laughs> mm. Ashley has an amazing voice that she won't use, no. but we're definitely gonna we're writing a song together currently. Yeah. Well, it's in it's in pre production. It's a rap song. It's a rap song, <laughs> and <laughs> we can't say what it is, but we're gonna bring it up on the podcast. Uh-oh. And <laughs> you don't know, Tremaine's wait. Tremaine's a rapper <laughs> slash singer. Would you say you're more R and B right now or rap or both? I said both. Okay, same, so same. Now, <laughs> Ashley can she can sing very well, and me and her make songs up all the time. So, sorry, it's <sighs> like he's being punished. Uh, babe, do you mind going again? Mm. Yeah, I'm sorry. Anyway, her rebound dude was crazy as fuck. Yes. Thank you. And she. And that's all. She <laughs> kept me straight. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley will be back. So. Your kids, now you said the oldest one picked your side. Definitely. The youngest one appears to have picked his, picked his dad's side. And the middle one. is He's the peacekeeper. He's mm-hmm. the middle child. He wants everybody to get along and, and be happy. And I'm the loving. middle child. Mm-hmm. Yep. I do this. They just want everything to just be, you Just know, chill, bro. Just, Why is everything so serious? That's no. totally how Brandon is. He's just like that. So yeah. like my middle child. You can say your. I mean, and if you're not talking about, if you're not talking in a derogatory way, you can say whatever you. Okay. I mean, I'll probably still bleep it out in That's the end. Fine. But. <laughs> <laughs> They'll know who they are when they, yeah, when they watch. <laughs> <laughs> now, since your sons do not live with you, and you're by yourself in this one bedroom apartment, you got a dog, right? I do have a little dog. Her name is Millie, and oh. she's awesome. Cute. She's very uh, cute, very sweet. Have you ever? She, you said she's little. Have you ever like stepped on her paw? Uh, definitely. Cause like her paws are literally that big. Don't don't you feel like terrible? Like you just like committed, mm-hmm. like you almost murdered her. Well, we always had big dogs. Yeah. Which you know, my ex got rid of all of the dogs. Mm-hmm. Like as soon as I left. What did he do with them? He, he farmed them out. He found a shelter for one of them, and um, somebody so a rescue shelter in D.C. They came and picked up little the little. Uh, Yorkie we had that was mm-hmm. and then um the chocolate lab i assuming he the boys said he found a home for for the chocolate lab but what that was f- my that was my birthday present to him so he got what rid a of fucking it. crazy guy i know i mean Dude. how do you get rid of your pets they're just part of you and Dude. then the jack russell was my youngest son's and um but she was sick so we put her down and he did call me 
to Wait, what do you mean you put her down because she was she, six? She was no, she was six. She was. Oh, like, uh, I thought you said she was no, six. No, no, I was no, just no. like, it's yeah. not a year until <laughs> old. I'm six she years old, Cash. You're fucking <laughs> done, bro. <laughs> no, she was sick. So, um, and he did call me to come be with Connor while they sedated her and. I I couldn't picture being in the same room of like my ex. Like I couldn't do I, it. I've not I've not seen him or had any communication with him. The boys, I'll ask him now and again. Have you talked to your dad? Have you heard from your dad? You know. Mm-hmm. And um, my middle son stays in touch with him and stays in touch with my youngest son. But my oldest, he said he get, he gets a text once in a while from him, and that's it. No. So you had a boyfriend after your ex. Yes. How long after like he said that did you? You went to Wyoming almost immediately, right? Yeah, yeah, before I even moved out of the house. And you went there for a week. Mm-hmm. So how did you continue a relationship when you lived in Maryland he lived in Wyoming? Um, he moved out here. After a week? Mm-hmm. Now, <laughs> I want to say a week of sex and you moved from Wyoming to Maryland? I mean, Maryland, amazing. Crab cakes are great. You know, East Coast is better. Anything's better than Wyoming, but... No, I think that... Wait, wait, wait. How long did it take me to move to PA? <laughs> After we there you go. Um, uh, I'm starting to get hot. <laughs> so hot and hot and here. Since you may not have a good voice. Um, how long? Well, you moved in. I mean, literally. Well, like legally moved in. Six months, right? Six. I would say it's around six months. Yeah. But she was sleeping there every day after like. Right. Like one dick down was all it took. Like so, yeah, so when when Papa drops the hammer, <laughs> bitches come. Oh, she's over oh, there crying geez. tears of joy, <laughs> and so is the baby. But one week of sex, and he's like, you know what? What was he doing in Wyoming that he just? Well, he had just come out of a divorce himself, so he was he was ready to start something. He, I mean, he'd been divorced, I guess, uh, almost a year, so he was kind of ready to move on and he had pine i knew this he'd pined over me for several years so if i had if i had been uh, i didn't i wasn't manipulative but i did know that you know he cared about me even Mm -hmm. in high school when he had moved away um we stopped well we were like you know boyfriend and girlfriend whatever you want to call it when you're in elementary school Mm -hmm. but when he we hit middle school he had moved but he had checked on me he had kept in touch and last time i'd seen him was my senior year my graduation he showed up and punched the my then boyfriend in the face for why because (laughs) he because he they just got in an argument this kid stuff and uh he was still thought that he had a chance with me and I, at the time, I didn't give him the time of day, but I so when I connected with him, I knew that it wouldn't take much to get him to want to come and be with me. And you have to remember too, I was like, I was lonely. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it wouldn't have happened it, honestly had my mind been straight. Mm-hmm. I think about it now. The past, like I said, the past eight years has been quite a roller coaster, bumpy mm-hmm. ride. Um, but it's taken me that long to recover. Mm-hmm. And um, I went to therapy, um, mm. and you know, she told me. She said, "You have to realize you were 20 when you got married." She said, "You're basically right back, back at that point. Yeah. You're, you're starting over at the age of 20, but yet you're." I was 48. Me, so. and, me, and Ashley talked about this. So when you go through a breakup, you have social media. You basically have to delete the past 27 years of your mm-hmm. life, not only on social media. But in your own mind, you have to delete that to be able. It's so right. You have to deal with it, and at the same time, you have to delete it out of your memory so you can move on. Mm-hmm. It's like, yes. say it's like a storage, like a storage, like a USB chip. Mm-hmm. You have it all stored up with all these memories and stuff. And in order to create new memories, you need to delete that. Exactly. And I was. It took me. It was taking me forever to. I didn't want to delete any of it. Yeah. Because I was basically, I was happy. I, I couldn't wait for the boys to, you know, get out of high school and, you know, we go do things together as a mm-hmm. couple and all that. And I, the one thing I do know is that every time I talked about our future, like after the boys had grown up, um, he didn't participate in those conversations. Like he never saw us, you know, traveling the U.S. or, you know, traveling, you mm-hmm. know, abroad or anything together. He would never really engage in those conversations so i honestly now after years i know now that regardless of 
what whether he met somebody or not, probably we wouldn't be together after the boys had graduated because he just was not, I, he just wasn't connecting with me. And um, I mean, which I, you know, like I said, I'm call me, call me Pollyanna. I was just very, you know, I was happy being a mom. I was happy being a wife. I thought I'd done everything I was supposed to do to have a good life. Yeah. And I was quite content. But yeah. <laughs> I apparently was the only one that was content. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, marriage and like kids are like, for some people, that's the ultimate goal. And mm -hmm. for other people, they're scared to accept that as like their true life. Right. I mean, uh, Tremaine did, was uh, engaged. She had a daughter. Or no, was your first, was the baby mom one with, that's the son, correct? And he had a son with her. And then he also had a daughter. Do you want to get into Baby Mama too? Mm. <laughs> we never really talk. We talk about Baby Mama one a lot, but Baby Mama two recently uh, sprung back up. Do you want to get into that, Tremaine? Um, it's nothing big. Um, you just she just recently hit me up after four years, and basically just trying to tell me. Um, the first thing she tried to tell me was some bullshit about she got me on camera at her mom's and dad's house. I don't know what the fuck that she was saying I was doing or whatnot, but she was saying that. She was talking shit on that end, and then she started saying some shit. And I'm talking about like three paragraphs. Of text messages? Yeah. Mm. Oh, I'm talking about that's just the very first thing she said to me. It was three paragraphs. <laughs> <laughs> and then, wait, wait, what time? All right, paint the picture for us. When do you receive these? Is it like 11 o'clock at night? You're I'm at work. Yet? I'm literally at work, working, putting carpet in, and then like a next text message, and then it says... A mom too, and I'm like, four years. Remember this, okay? Four so, years since the text so, message. So what do you hit me up for, right? So boom, I, hit, I pressed it, and then the first thing I see on the joint because I got accepted on Instagram. Because I was now wait, wait, wait. What do you think when you see her, her pop up? What did, what was your immediate thought? Let me try to remember that because I I was more stunned on anything of like. Why is she hitting me up? That right. was the very first thing is why is she hitting me up? I mean, up? did did your thought go to your daughter? Did your thought go to why would this bitch ever talk to me? Was it happy? Was it sad? Was it like it literally that was the most craziest thing? I usually I'm got so much emotion in my body, but it was crazy that I didn't feel nothing. But why you hit me up? That mm -hmm. was the only thing I felt. And then when I saw the whole bullshit she was saying, and then she was saying that she got married. Um her the bull um adopted my daughter um uh she's happy she calls him daddy this and that blah 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 um then start going back in the past saying this what what did she think that i did this and that blah 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 and i'm talking about it's going on and on so now i'm on here i hit her up saying i'm at work you know um basically in the whole end congratulations you know on your marriage you know mm -hmm. um but I'm going through the right protocols to get my daughter. Mm -hmm. I'm not going through you. You feel me? Because you don't know, but I'm not on the birth certificate because she didn't let me. She didn't let me know that she was having a baby, and, and I found out 14 days later because my friend told me. Oh my so gosh. right there, I don't have no rights yet because I'm not on the birth certificate. Mm -hmm. So then that's why it's easy for that guy to adopt her. I was her. gonna say because when you said he was adopt that he adopted her, it would, he'd need your permission. Exactly. So <laughs> now, do you feel any sort? type of way about the adopted father um i don't know him. the only thing i know about him is that that's she they both found each other in the rehab so mm -hmm. again that, i don't know nothing about him so i can't say shit on him or mm -hmm. nothing like that but the only thing i know is that from the message she told me and me telling her like i'm going through the right procedures etc cetera, etc cetera. she's saying that we got lawyers this and that and i was saying congratulations you're going to need one yeah and then she came basically came to the point that we said stop talking i said that well have a good day you know i don't want to argue i don't know why you hit me up just to argue because mm -hmm. that's obvious and you want to argue mm -hmm. so i said that let's leave it alone so i left the whole thing alone then she went back up apologizing saying that it wasn't me on camera she looked at it she's sorry this and that and then right after she said the sorry and everything like that literally another paragraph saying that well she called her dad she calls him daddy now this and that blah 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 and everything like that and then i said again congratulations mm -hmm. you know on yeah. everything See, i'm not criminating myself or nothing mm -hmm. like right. that because i got so whole thing in order for me to, for her so i can do a dna test yeah et cetera, et cetera, to proceed on that but it was just shocking me that why you hit me up just to conversate because i know in my damn well listen this is my point of view mm -hmm. if 
you marry this guy. So I'm going to tell you, me feeling the guy's situation. Mm -hmm. I pro I can put money easily. The guy don't have a clue that she even hit me up at all. Mm -hmm. The reason why I'm saying this is because if a man, let's say I'm in his position, if mm -hmm. a man going to take care and they got a kid too together. So now we got a kid together and I adopted a kid. He don't know nothing about me or nothing like that, unless whatever she said about me or whatever. But he adopted a kid and everything like that. Y'all happily married. Y'all got your own pl place, spot, et cetera, et cetera. Why are you hitting me up mm -hmm. if you're happily married? Right. You, know, you feel me? You yeah. should. There's no reason to hit me up. Right. You should already like you. The only time you should hear me is when boom, we got paperwork that DNA test, whatever. That was the only time you should talk again. Mm -hmm. But then she hit me up to explain all that. So if I was the guy, I'd be pissed. So obviously, yeah. I don't feel the guy knows either. So right, right. That's funny because recently, this past week, my ex tried to follow us on Instagram. Block <laughs> that bitch right away. And now oh I used to, I used to be like, I was very angry. Like, I would think I would be angry or like right. sad when she hit me up. You said you were like shocked a little bit. I laughed. I was like, this fucking dumb bitch. <laughs> so I, I blocked her right away. Right. Like, and which is a good sign of like, I'm completely, I, yes. way, I know. Like, if there was any test of like, whether I even thought about her anymore, right. it's I know it's out of my mind. Like. She's gone. Like, right. I just think it's funny. Like, why would you think I would accept your friend request? Like, why are you even trying to add us? Like, yeah. what's the point of adding the Instagram? Right. So I just thought I thought it was no, funny. Somebody's funny. just that talking. Is. That's what that yeah. means. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, um. So I had a second beer because this is the Christmas episode. I'm gonna give you the beer. <laughs> I like the drink. You should have got liquor. <laughs> you know what? Next episode, I got something for you. I got something like twenty plus years aged. It would have been perfect oh. for this episode. Damn it, Justin. <laughs> I'm going to rush because I need Tremaine, too. Go and get it. I can wait. I'm thirsty. Too far away. <laughs> okay. Uh, baby, you wanted to try this beer with me. Do you want to come over and try it? So, oh my God. this is... Quit being such a little <laughs> bitch. So, this is Fegley's Brew Works. Brewed Elf Reserve. You see the names? Like, come <laughs> on now. <laughs> He wants me to get like, what What beer would make Tremaine happy? So it's impossible to make this motherfucker happy. Oh Jesus, no wonder you have two baby mamas. How do you make you happy? He doesn't like craft beer at all. This is a Belgian. This is my favorite kind of beer. I haven't drank it yet. Uh, it got a weird smell to it. But nah, that's bad, weird smell. We talked about white people having weird smells, and this is this is a Belgian. This is a white beer, so that could be the thing. That might white be. White things smell weird. It smells Christmassy. I like that. Come on, Tremaine. That's fucking Christmassy. That is good. That's cr that's good. I like that. Mm. Like yeah, Christmas. that's what I Cheers. smell this place. Mm. Yeah, like it's Christmas. good. Tastes like Christmas. Thanks for coming on, Jamie. You bet. <laughs> Come on, Tremaine. Did you like it? I still don't know why you want me on here. But um, <laughs> we want to hear everybody's story. Yeah, he wants to hear it's everyone. You can go find a homeless shit. guy around the corner and be like, I'm on the podcast. I want to hear your story. <laughs> it's not for me. It's, I want to give other, we want to give other people the platform. I think sometimes it's therapeutic to like, yes, it's, oh, yeah. talk about stuff. This, like, podcast helped me so much after mm -hmm. my divorce like so much just coming and talking to other people was like ashley was huge. my podcast ashley saved she my had, life she by had to far. listen to me oh, so many okay. times yeah no. oh, yes. <laughs> ashley definitely saved my you life listen to me you know how many times i would cry i was at amazon so like i went that's from how we met we worked at amazon together then, yeah. uh, you can say that all right Right, we cool. worked at a warehouse. There you together. go. Yeah. I mean, either, Amazon's <laughs> fine. It was very States. glamorous. We yeah. love Amazon, so Amazon sponsor us. It was very glamorous, you know. And she was the first person I met, actually. She was the first person you met? Mm -hmm. at, oh, in at Amazon? Line. Yeah, we were in line in to life. get hired. Was this pre or, this was, was this pre or post this Wyoming? Was right. This was after Wyoming. When I <laughs> so had you to were come good back, at, I had, she had a glow. You were good. And the was, hole was good and filled, huh? I was, I was, I was good. I was going to get my... I get on my own feet and do my own thing. And the only place for me to go, I was like to make enough money because I didn't get out al alimony or anything from him. Mm -hmm. So it was Amazon because they paid the best. Yeah. Oh, I want to pay for school. And yeah. Yeah. That's why I went there. I want to get into this real fast. So wait, I thought we were talking about something completely. What were we talking about? I I've been drinking. <laughs> what, were oh, what were we talking about? I don't know. You just, oh. you interrupted. <laughs> The white lightning bear, bro. Fucking banging. Tremaine knows. That's my zaddy, and I'm his bear. Not a big deal. Nothing gay about it. <laughs> I don't want any part of that. Oh, I don't my know where, where Lord. He was talking about the podcast being good for him. Oh, yeah. It was like, yeah. Oh, she was saying that I was like, 
I helped her uh, mm -hmm. when she. Uh, so you're she, you're waiting for another compliment from me to you? Exactly. Is that what you're <laughs> waiting for? <laughs> so, so I interrupted your compliment. No, I wanted to compliment Jamie because after my last relationship, she was there for me a lot and. Last New Year's uh -huh. Eve, she came over with her puppy, and we cooked dinner together <laughs> and watched the ball yeah. drop and talked shit on all the performances because the <laughs> they were so terrible. Because they were awful. But yeah. I didn't want to do anything. Like I like had friends that like were. I was like, I don't want to do anything. I just want to be at home. And she was like, I'll come over. We yeah, because I don't. The yeah. holidays, I don't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it was like, really I nice. Was yeah. She holidays wanted are me to so. Come. It was they're so hard. hard. They're really hard, but I I'm very happy. Like bef like I said last. Christmas, I couldn't handle even seeing. If I would have saw red or green, bro, <laughs> I would have broke everything. <laughs> but that's how I was too. I had a black Christmas tree last year. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even have a like. If somebody it was like two feet tall, <laughs> I turned my phone off basically because I was like, if somebody says Merry Christmas to me, I'm gonna fucking kill them. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I mean, my family did text me, and I just sure I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I responded or not, but I couldn't hand, like I I I couldn't like handle like being out in public right. because I just. Cried so. Like, oh, uh, yeah. I cried so I know much. That feeling. I all I did was cry. Like I felt like it didn't matter. Things would just come up, and I I would just start crying for no reason. Yeah. I, I thought it was no reason, but you know, no. Ther therapy tells you it's a death. You know, you're going mm -hmm. through that death. That's what I said. So like so death. I compared it to. It's basically that person died. The person that you knew once died. Mm -hmm. But it's even harder because their ghost is still walking around. Exactly. They're not, but, yeah, they're still out there. Yeah, and mm -hmm. if you were to see them, they want to be the person you knew, but they would still have the same body. Exactly. Which would... Exactly. What the fuck? Like, yeah. I could see this person, and that's that's one of my, like, biggest fears. Like, if anything ever happened with me and Ashley and she was mean to me, oh, it's not even like she had to be like... Like, <laughs> like if she like just... She if she just, like, wasn't nice to me, right. I would fucking... Like, I... I mean, I'm a fucking bear, bro. Don't forget, <laughs> daddy's a bear. Daddy's a fucking hunk of dory. But right. the yeah. bear over here, he gets a little, he he gets a little sad. If... I think he's very like hyper, like alert, like with my moods, like. And I'm like going. I have like I'm in school. I work full time. Family stuff, dog. Like so, sometimes like when I get really stressed out, I just get really quiet and mm -hmm. like I just don't because I'm afraid I'll just get upset. So if I am like quiet or like anything, he's like, "What's going on? Are you okay?" Like right. I'm like, "It's not you. Like it's not you. I promise. Like it's everything else." But I think I think I'm like that too. I I think communication is really important mm -hmm. to me, and I get I sometimes I think I try to over communicate now because I didn't communicate enough. I, in the past. I want her to communicate. So, like, yeah. I feel like now I'm like too much sometimes. So, it's, we just got to find like a good balance. Like, but we, we all, yeah. we've all had traumatic relationships. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And me and Ashley specifically have had ones right before we started dating. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. This beer is delicious. Um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yours was like a year, right? Or what's that? Between your ex and me. How long was it? Eight mm. months to a year? I can't remember. It was. Met you in no, it wasn't a year. It wasn't a year. No, I don't, I don't think so. No, I it broke was it, off I, it was like seven months. Yeah. Okay, November. Mm -hmm. Mine was like six months. So, I mean, it took me a, a while. Like, and when she, I think we got into it with our episode where when you first asked me out, I kind of laughed it off because I was like, "There's no fuck." Because I don't even think why would anyone even love me Stop. after all the oh, things yeah. my ex it's hard so after somebody after like something your ex no, does I totally feel that way. it fucks you mm -hmm. up mm -hmm. yeah it does it we've really... talked about this <laughs> yeah only I mean, when i'm drunk though when ashley's drunk she cries a lot <laughs> yeah. and he was funny i was just thinking like so annoying. like a week yeah. ago i was just thinking i was like uh, ashley hasn't cried in a while because when we first started dating she would just like get drunk and start crying start crying because yeah. like, i was just so nervous to start uh, yeah. something again and mm -hmm. she hadn't done it in a while I needed a good cry. <laughs> but <laughs> was it last night or two nights ago? Two nights ago. Two nights ago. I got her a keg of Golden Monkey. If you don't know uh, what Golden Monkey uh, is, uh, Golden Monkey. go get a six day. pack. If you're a hard <laughs> drinker, get a six pack and be humble, bro, because you're about to drink some shit. Mm -hmm. That's going to fuck you up. I think it's up. like drinking okay. a glass of liquor, like a like mixed it's drink. Strong. Yeah. It's strong. It's very yeah. strong. You, and Tremaine, you had a sip of it. Remember the other day you came over and had a sip? How would you categorize uh, Monkey. Disgusting. <laughs> it's disgusting. a strong beer. Strong. That strong. is delicious. I wanted to do all five fingers, but I felt like it got out of hand. Um, but she drank it. 
after she gets past three cups of monkey, I'm like, I know what's happening tonight. Right. <laughs> like, and I was wrapping presents, so I was like, I'll have me like, yeah. da, 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 drinking monkey. We were watching a good, we were watching a new show too, so we were like, yeah. And I'm also just. We just yeah. recently have. She just lost what ten pounds now. Yeah. So we've we recently been, drank in we've a been while. cutting yeah. back on drinking, mm -hmm. but I saw her drinking a bunch, and I was like, I should say something. But <laughs> when I say something, she says something, and I was like, it's not worth the fight. But that night, she got emotional. Kind of right. <laughs> well, not a fight, but you know. Yeah, she got emotional, <laughs> right. and then uh, she wound up crying, telling me how much she loves me. <laughs> Uh, oh, but I mean, that's not a bad thing. No, no, and, it's annoying. And, but in the beginning of our relationship, she did it a lot. Right. And I and I never held it against her because I understood, and I was still feeling the same nerves. You know, like I still feel nervous. We yeah. were both. I know you cried about it a lot. <laughs> you say we, a lot. That sounds bad. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we both. God. We, we both go through it. You know, everyone goes through their own breakups their own way and. It's good to have a partner yeah. who understands, and I completely understand her side. She was with somebody for a long time, and if she needs to, mm -hmm. if she's nervous about our relationship, I do not, I would never hold it against her. And I'm not, it's not like a bad cry, it's yeah. not, and I'm yeah. not comparing or anything like that, but I, I think I get, I, I overthink everything, and I think that I, like, get nervous because I'm like, I've been here before with somebody else, and then look what happened, you know, right. like, so I just, and you shouldn't look at things that way, right. but some, especially when there's alcohol involved, sometimes you're like, you, I just get nervous because I'm like so happy and I'm just like right. scared. She that feels like everything's so. I know. It's too just, good to be true. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is yeah. dumb because I wish I could just be like, yes, everything's awesome. Why can't I just like? But I'm like, no, something has happened. Something's wrong. Like, what's gonna happen? Right. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! She's but. she does get stressed out. Yep. Yeah. I wouldn't say. Yeah, I would say too fast. Yeah. But I always like to be there. You know, if she has a problem, I like to be there to listen to her. And she's like, I can't believe I'm crying. I'm like, it's okay. Like, I get it. Like, people right. cry sometimes. Right. I mean, my ex was an ice queen. So when she cries, I actually enjoy yeah. it. I'm like, oh, yes. <laughs> Please tell me something. In that something. case, I go, she's got so <laughs> I have something to bring up. That you said she's an ice queen because that's something that my mom mentioned to me um, after my divorce. That she said, she goes, you know, the thing about your ex is that, like, no emotion. Mm -hmm. It's very unemotional. But, like, I would catch him watching a cartoon you know a, car, a commercial or something and he'd be tearing up and all that but like he didn't show that kind of emotion mm -hmm. in our relationship or or even with the boys and i was like what a bitch yeah you know <laughs> you're just like really you sh you just bottled that up why right why yeah. you've been with this person for 27 years yeah. why yeah. why now are yeah, you deciding to you know why do you decide to bottle it all up and save it for somebody else it, i'll never understand it i but. mean my ex was like emotional towards me mm -hmm. and she was ice queen towards everybody else like everyone was like oh. she's such a bitch she's such a bitch <laughs> i was like you just gotta get to know her you gotta get to know her right because she grew up in an orphanage which i'm so happy she did <laughs> fucking great oh, i wish more i wish she would have been fucking murdered there oh, I hate when he talks like this. nobody in her past yeah, loved her and nobody like loves you now bitch <laughs> Anyway, so I, I kind of do it mostly for Ashley just because I know she's going to get it. It gets her riled up. No, it uh, doesn't. I just don't understand. It doesn't make sense. I yeah. mean, your hair is all fucked up. You're coming it over here talking. It probably is. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. There you go. Looks great, babe. Looks great. Whatever. Yeah. Um, but I, I know noticed, like, on. like I said, I was, like, scared to, like, if anyone was ever mean to me, like, that I, mm -hmm. that I, the last time I saw them, they were very lovey-dovey. Right. So the the day after she said, like, I'm not happy anymore. And I was just, like, so distraught. Like, she acted the way she acted towards everyone else, towards me. Uh -huh. Like, I wasn't the person who got you a good job, got you a house, mm -hmm. got you a car, got you a good ring, got you a good dick. Right. And I just, like, I couldn't, like, handle the whole. Yeah. So now you're going to be a fucking, you're going to be like me. It's like a switch. Yeah. yeah like you, definitely. She just flipped the switch and it was fucking crazy i was like but maybe that was her way of dealing with whatever was going on in her head because i'm sure my ex would say the same thing about me i'm sure that after no. everything ended it was probably that's different. why i'm I don't we know. talked about this with uh pastor norman i feel like pastor I'm norman brown girlfriend. the ghost <laughs> the ghost of our past are fucking haunting but as that's shit bro the way i couldn't after i ended things i still lived there for a few weeks we didn't really see each Ugh. other but 
Anyway, he's so dramatic. And I couldn't. I was just saying, personally, I couldn't. Could you be with one of your ex baby mamas living in the same house? We didn't see each other. We had opposite schedules. It would be depending on the situation. So I had to get it a place to live. Yes. So anyway, I'm sure that I acted cold after everything because that was my way of. Well, you were protecting. Yeah. Yourself. I, mean, I was not mean, but I'm just saying that probably. that's like one of my biggest fears. Like, if we were to break up and you were to act non loving towards you, I couldn't even, like, my brain would be like, what the fuck? Who is this bitch? Right, but after you break up with somebody, you expect them to act loving towards you? That doesn't make sense. Be nice. I mean, yeah. Well, try nice, it with, but... the, with having three kids. Oh, God. No. I don't, I'm I can't so imagine. glad. I can't so, imagine. He I was can't so imagine. cold, and I was like, but I'm still the mother of your children you oh. should still be you know concerned about my well-being where right. and one there was one night there was a crazy night it was a horrible night and i needed a place to sleep because the rebound boyfriend was off the charts and i was like I old got, wyoming yeah wyoming old wyoming was not someone i wanted to be with that night so i called my ex-husband knowing that you know he's still in the house with the boys and I just needed a couch. Mm -hmm. Just let me sleep on the couch. And he said, no, absolutely not. You are not welcome here. I'm like, you have all three of my kids in your house. And you're telling me that I can't come sleep on the freaking couch just for the night? Because what? I, and that's when I ended up sleeping in the car in the truck stop. I used to just go because, you know, Wyoming was off his charts. And mm -hmm. so I would go and sleep. Is in Wyoming the, still alive? Um, he had a stroke. Yeah, I know that. But yeah. I didn't know no, he's he, still alive. Oh, okay. It, he anyway. probably has COVID now because <laughs> he's in the nursing home, sadly. And I feel bad because, I, I mean, even my boys, um, the two older ones that know him and stuff said, you know, as much as we didn't want you to end up with him, you know, they didn't want him to have a stroke either, right. but he ended up having a stroke. And they all know what he looks like. And oh, yeah, they know him. They all met him. Yeah. Now, I met him. <laughs> now, I she didn't just. to punch him in the face. I didn't just say, do, you, do they know what he looks like for a reason? We're going to get into a game called What Do I Look Like? Oh, gosh. <laughs> okay. Have and fun. Have fun. The name of the game is What Do I Look Like? Okay. What's going to happen is I'm going to play a video behind me. As I play this video, you're going to stare straight at that camera. Okay. So you will not see the video behind me clearly. Oh, okay. At the end of the video, you're going to write down three things about the person you think is in the video. You're going to write down race, gender, and something else. Oh, God. So if you were to look at me... I'm a white man with a beard. Right. So that's the race, the gender, and something else. Someone with a problem, not me, okay? I asked you a simple question. Did you use some motherfucker responded like you don't know what the fuck's going on? Man, fuck hey. you! Man, fuck you, bitch! Fuck you! Come on, nigga! Now I get your Come on, bring up your chest, damn dog! Now there's two voices. The one that's going to be you're looking for is the first voice you heard, Alt. What's your bitch ass gonna do? That one. Yeah, your bitch ass ain't gonna do a goddamn thing, Trick. That guy, <laughs> Take your old ass ass out of my face. All right. You got your fucking ass hoes. Bitch ass nigga. That guy. Now, do you guys need me to replay it, or did you get enough information? I'm good. Okay. No, no, no. Uh, Jamie, what you said is not a descriptive word towards the end. Okay. So I, I just right. want you to understand that you have to put something physically about the person. So what do you think this person looks like? Thus the game, what do I look like? Now when you're ready, please show your whiteboards towards the camera. Okay, um, Tremaine, what do you have? A black male that's skinny. Okay. Jamie, what do you have? A white guy with a cap. Can you show me your boards again, please? So, white guy wearing a cap. Black male skinny. Oh, this is... So... <laughs> all right, you can turn around so you can see what the person looks like. It's the guy with the... It's the Asian man. It's the Asian guy. It's the Asian guy. <laughs> so, let me see your boards again, please. I'm sorry. I have to... Not this is a... Uh, white guy wearing a cap. Black male skinny. I gotta go, it's a skinny Asian man, so Tremaine takes this one. Okay. <laughs> skinny Asian guy. All right, All right, please face the camera. Here comes the second video. Hello, this is France from France. Welcome back to my channel. 
Today's video was requested and voted on by my Instagram and Facebook friends. And the topic is the difference between so without further ado, let's get to it. As you notice, I had to skip around quite a bit, so the information could not be discerned from the video. When you have all three, please show the whiteboard to the camera. <laughs> now Tremaine's like five and one in this game, so. Let's see if he remains undefeated. And now, since you won last time, please tell us first, Tremaine, what do you have? Uh, a woman. Uh huh. She's Ukraine. No, you have to say a race. We've been over this. <laughs> so that guy obviously white then. And, okay. Um, big lips. Big lips. A white, big lipped. <laughs> uh, okay. White, big lip female. What do you have, Jamie? I have. Can you please? Uh, female? Can you talk into the microphone so we can hear you? Female, black, and I see red lipstick on her. Okay, please uh, face the screen. Today's video was requested and voted on by my Instagram and Facebook friends. So, female, black. I don't know if, I don't it's think she's tie. wearing. She's not wearing. What do you mean it's a tie? She doesn't she have red two, lipstick I got two. On. What do you have two of what? I, I guess she's a woman with big lips. She got big lips. No, sir. She definitely won this one. How? She don't got she, red I lipsticks got two, on. But she doesn't have red lipstick. No, I agree with you on that. But Ooh. wait, wait. Are you agreeing that you black both have two? Female. I she I think with the black female, one hundred percent. But the big lips, I got. Babe, I need you, I need you over here. Lips. Mm -hmm. Ashley, we need you. Oh else? yeah, now you got somebody. Yes, you're right. Ashley, Jamie wins. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 1-1. One, one. All right, please erase your boards and get ready for the final video. 1-1. One, one. This is the tiebreaker. Okay. All right, here we go. Yeah, I'm going to take my horse to the old town road. I'm going to ride till I can't no more. I'm going to take my horse to the old town road. I'm going to ride till I can't no more. Got the horses in the back. Horse stock is attached. Head is mighty black. Got the boots as black to match. Okay. Now, the last one's normally a little bit <laughs> trickier than the rest. That's the only hint I'll give you. Mm. <sighs> Pow. Push it. Push it real good. Bow. Now, Jamie, you kind of want to hide your answers from Tremaine so we cannot cheat. <laughs> he's, look, he's studying his. He's looking down very intently. <laughs> okay, please show your whiteboards oh, to the camera. One. Jamie, what do you have? Ratty cowboy hat. Can you talk to the microphone? Sorry, I can't hear. You. A white old guy with a ratty cowboy hat. Okay, Tremaine, what do you have? I said I got a white man with overalls. <laughs> okay. We're close. I would like to show you the video. Please turn around and look at the screen. For everybody who's new to my channel, oh, my, my voice is deeper because oh, I'm a female gosh. to male to female detransitioner, which means that I was born a fully natural woman cisgendered woman and then later on decided or thought mistakenly that I was transgender and so I took testosterone to transition into become to medically transition into a trans man and I took testosterone for almost two years and that gave me a lot of physical changes obviously and then I decided that I was horrendously wrong later on and that was the worst decision for me and I transitioned back to where I'm at now cisgendered female I got boobs you can't see them obviously but yes I am not a man now imagine being so confused. I want to say before we go yes. with this, we have to dive into that. That you were a female, then you started taking hormones, then you're like, you know what? Fuck this. I gotta go back to female. Now that's the most confused you could possibly be. Can I please see your whiteboards? Because this is gonna be something. Yeah. Nothing. That that was, what do you mean? Yeah, there's nothing in it. White male, white old guy. <laughs> Hold on, let me. We're tied. No, we got to. No. We can't. I don't think we're tied. Um, I hate white. You are correct yeah. with white. You're both white. We're both are white. <laughs> now, the only thing I'm going to say is Jamie I said, said old, old guy. Because 
just sounded old to me. And so this is man. not an old man. This is not a man either. Damn but <laughs> but he's not old. And because right. you put old, right. Tremaine it. takes it. All right, Tremaine. I'm still confused with the video. I, I was going to say. <laughs> it's not an easy so one to follow. What, what, but that's a woman. Now? She's 100% born a female. Yes. But wanted to be a guy. Yes. But then, then wanted to be a female again. Yes. I'm confused. And that was, what do I look like? <laughs> that woman was more confused than any woman yes, has ever been. Yes, that was very confusing. So, if you don't understand, she was a, a white woman who started off as a white woman. Then was like, I want to be a dude. And then said, you know what? I want to go back to being a woman. Yeah. I mean... Could you have fucked yourself up anymore? No. That's, and surgeries. That's, like, huge. I don't know. She did not talk about if she, if she got her Sheboygan cut off. Yeah, but she, I think that's so permanent. Like, dude, do not. Like, you can mess with, like, certain private parts. But mm -hmm. downstairs, why would you mess with that? Well, we worked with a girl who, well, a guy who is now a girl. But she just went through the surgery this past summer. But she's waited for years to get it done and... I can't imagine the oh my gosh, the rehabilitation uh, after that. And I, again, I have Pain. no like animosity or hate towards people that want no. to, that feel like they're born in a different mm -hmm. body, but definitely sleep on the whole private part thing. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I mean, it, tomorrow if I woke up, I was like, I'm a girl. I want to just be like, I'm going to call the doctor. I need to get this <laughs> thing out of here. If what? Like tomorrow, if I woke up and I was like her, I was like, you know what? I kind of feel like I'm a girl now. I, I don't think I would even st still be able to cut my... Stay with you. Ashley would still stay with No, she, she would not. You. She's way... <laughs> I would have to have a strap on still then for her. Well, yeah, but... She need, I mean, know, she still our, emo you. our emotional connection... <laughs> yeah. On point. Now, sexual <laughs> connection right now, on point. But <laughs> if I were to remove the testes and the penile... Babe, I don't, I'm not a nurse. How, what's like the... the you're just some lady. What's the medical term? I mean, you're just somebody. What's the medical term for a penis? <laughs> penis, penis, penis. What's the medical term for uh, balls? Scrotum. I feel like there's more to it, and you're not saying. Because <laughs> when she does homework about something that she not is not, <laughs> she, there's a lot of big words that she throws out there. <laughs> why are you looking at me like that? She's very mad. I don't know why she's so mad. <laughs> but I think that if they're questioning their sexuality they do that at a very early age when i worked at the schools there were literally kindergartners that didn't feel like they were their gender now They're, what did you do at school you don't have to get into where you work I, was, I was a paraprofessional i, what does that I mean? was like assistant teacher assistant mm -hmm. and i loved it i absolutely loved it and i'd still be doing it except that i just can't make any money off of it so i now, can't support myself did you do that your whole like your whole marriage and stuff no i went from job to job you know, just trying to, you know, be mostly be available to my kids mm -hmm. and raise them as much as I can. That was kind of the agreement. But then when we moved out here, mm -hmm. it was I was not to work because we didn't know anybody. And so my ex wanted me to stay home. And so I ended up at the schools volunteering. And then mm -hmm. the next thing, because I want to work. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm not a lazy person, <laughs> I mean, yeah. and I wanted to earn a paycheck of some sort. So they hired me on as a paraprofessional, and uh, I loved it. I loved working with the kids. But was there a certain period of time where you did not work? For three years when we first moved out here. Now, do you think it's harder going looking for a full-time job when you didn't have a job for a certain period of time? Or would it be harder for you to be emotionally ready for a new relationship? What was, more, really what was more difficult? Yeah. <laughs> what was more difficult, looking for a full-time position or looking to trust somebody again? Well, I would have to say to trust somebody again. I want to get into that one later <laughs> about your ability to trust again. I, yeah. What about looking for a job? I mean, when you went to interviews, did they ask, what's with this unemployment gap between 2000? Right. And they would ask me, and i tell them that, you know, we relocated out here and the boys were little and... We didn't know anybody, so until we were more mm -hmm. enmeshed into the community and knew people that could take that I felt comfortable could take care of the boys without me. Um, and like I said, the school was perfect because the boys were at the school. Mm -hmm. And once my once Connor got into 
uh, kindergarten, then I was full on in the schools full time. That'd be so cool to see your kids when you're at work. It was awesome. Yeah, that'd I loved, be awesome. I loved every minute of it. I love, loved like, it. My job right now, I despise. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. But currently we're working from home. I get to see Ashley whenever she's not working. Mm -hmm. I get to see the puppy who, who has never not seen me. Right, I mean, the longest right. he's went without seeing me is me taking a poop out. Right. <laughs> but, like, he's never not been with me. Right. So he couldn't, like, in his brain, he couldn't handle yeah. that. Even though I could treat it like second fiddle to Ashley. He <laughs> loves Ashley way more than he loves me. <laughs> That's the best, though. I mean, being able to see your, your kids growing up and being around your loved ones during the day, it's awesome. All right, let's say you were to have a job. Mm -hmm. At this job, you're making $30 an hour. Mm -hmm. Pretty good money. That'd be awesome. It's a great job, <laughs> but at this job, you do not see your kids, and at the other job, you're making $20 an hour, but you get to see your kids for a few hours a day. Which job do you take? I would take the 20 hour. Yeah. My kids come first, always. What about you, Tremaine? <clears throat> Taking that 30. <laughs> <laughs> because when they get home, they got daddy's money to play with. I'm damn skipping. Yeah. I got to make that money. Yeah. Right. That's why I got I to gotta also take care of myself if I can take care of somebody else. Yeah, I mean, it's answer. like the airplane thing, like putting your own mask before you put on somebody else's. Exactly. But, I mean, right now. Maybe that's what's wrong with my mentality because, like, at, well, at 54, I'm finding I'm having a hard time finding jobs because yeah. of my age. If they don't see me and see that I'm still, you know, fairly young, active, mm -hmm. they just see my age on a resume, they're not interested in seeing my resume. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, or interviewing me so that's a problem mm -hmm. definitely but i think that yeah if i had the choice i would always pick if i could see my kids a few hours a day i would take the it's, it's amazing mm -hmm. i mean i couldn't i want to trade like right now i'm barely even looking I, I should be looking for another job because i do not like my job mm -hmm. but i don't think one most jobs are not hiring right now they're fine right. no, they, yeah. two I just I, I love seeing uh, I love seeing my girlfriend every day mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I love seeing cash every day. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just like the money that it's worth to me is right. It's worth it because you don't get that time back. No, you and can't. I don't give anything anything that. And people ask me all the time. They're just like you know don't you, like you have get the whore who you have like this animosity. I love towards. that you call her the whore. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking love it. <laughs> But, like, I don't have any animosity because I, I know that he provided me at least that time with my kids. Oh, fuck that. You should have animosity. Well. You should. I, I, I really honestly, when you said you don't have any feelings with the, you know, Instagram, mm -hmm. um, I have, like, zero feelings towards him mm -hmm. whatsoever. I think that, you know, I look back on it and it's a shame. Yeah. And, I, and I mourned the life I thought I was going to have. Mm -hmm. That's what I mourned. Do I mourn him? No. It's not not, not whatsoever. In my mind, it's not about <laughs> necessarily mourning the what you just said, but it's mm -hmm. more about the time that he took that you could have yes. had with somebody else. That and too. it's great that he brought you your kids. Mm -hmm. But, but like, for me, it's very, c compared to you, minuscule, what I have. I lost my college years. Mm -hmm. When I first went to college, I met her, and I stayed faithful, and I would never cheat. That's... I would never. I'd rather right. die than cheat because I feel like that's my word, right. and I stand by my word. If right. I say something, that's who I am. I'm not going to change that no matter what. Right. And I'm. I think I'm a pretty straight shooter. Tremaine, do I ever lie to you? Do you think? Do you think I'm a pretty straight shooter? You do lie to me. What do I lie? When you say you're not going to put bring up something from an episode, and you still do. When did I bring up an episode? Something from an episode? I'm not going to say it. You're not going to. No, I say it after the whole thing, but I'm not saying it so you can bring it up again. Okay. Um, <laughs> he get it. He's gonna start talking about it. No, I'm not bringing it up. I don't know. I've, I've been drinking. So was it this episode that I did it? No, all the other ones. Oh, oh wait, the don't. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> oh shit. Oh, I know what you're talking about, then. I don't remember you telling me not to, but it's possible. I mean, I, when I when I get drunk, I loose lips take ships, right? That's right. Um, <laughs> But nor babe, would you say I'm pretty honest most of the time? Uh, she said yes, but yes. she's worrying about her homework. I think I'm pretty honest most of the time. What the fuck was I even talking about? Well, you were talking about your word, and that's just it. When I married him, mm -hmm. I, that that was my vow. Yeah, I didn't take that lightly. 
I, oh, I agree. I, I, I expected to still be married to him until he died or yeah, I died. Exactly. It's, I never, it's something that I took very, very I seriously. I took it very, very seriously. So As you should. And mm-hmm. a lot of people nowadays do not. They don't. No. Now, do you think something about the years that, like, the way dating is now mm-hmm. influenced your ex to do what he did? Or do you think it would have happened either way? Like, if you would have grown up in the 1920s, mm-hmm, right. I mean, given that you probably would have had a black eye a few times yeah, a day, right. and they would have put, like, you know, you would have put, like, a steak on your face, like, right. just don't talk shit again. Right. Now, do you think this would have still happened back in the 1920s as opposed to now in the 2020s? I think now, knowing how callous he was about the whole thing, mm-hmm. yes. I think that mm-hmm. he probably would have cheated on me even back then. But I think that, I mean, his his... His idea was for me to stay in the house Mm -hmm. until the boys graduated from high school, Mm -hmm. which I wasn't okay with. I'm like, okay, so you know that you're with somebody else, but you want me to stay here. And what? how's that supposed to work? I'm Mm -hmm. supposed to just continue to believe you're at work when I know you're really with her. I wasn't wasn't okay with that. I I think it started in the very beginning, if I heard correctly, when you say he proposed to you in a couple of months. Right there, right. That was the biggest red flag already from the very beginning to show that it would have never worked because how fast y'all jumped into an actual marriage. Something that for a few months y'all wanted to put everything on the line and said, I want to be with you for the rest of my life after a couple of months. Mm -hmm. That's right there for me personally. I feel that no matter what generation, he was going to cheat regardless because. He didn't even want that marriage. I guess he just had a fairy tale of having a family and everything like that. But again, you say he didn't even probably he didn't want a family, so No, he only wanted one. He he agreed to one. Oh, okay. And okay. I was adamant that we were having three for some unbeknownst reason. <laughs> I had to have three kids. <laughs> but I, I agree with you. I think that like I was in college and and he was working two jobs at the time and you know, my family was doing really well, and I really think now, I mean, after, I mean, my dad tried to end this a couple times, yeah, <laughs> and so easy. I think that he saw things that I was just blind to at the time, mm-hmm. and then my dad passed away, and um, I think from that point on, it just really started to deteriorate after that. Now, when you're, I'm sorry mm-hmm. about your father. Yeah. When your father passed away, was he a comforting Source, or was he still that? No, he was not comforting at all when my dad passed away. I want you to talk to me about that because <laughs> I also want to talk about when my cousin passed away, the same thing, one of the things my ex did. What happened when your father passed away? Well, my dad had been sick. He he passed away at 52 of colon cancer, and we'd known he was sick. Mm-hmm. And um, we had t- me and the boys and, and my ex, we would go from Flagstaff down to the valley all the time to see my dad. And we my, and my folks, the whole time the kids were little, we were trying to make sure that they knew the grandparents and were, mm-hmm. you know, hanging out with the grandparents and all that. But once my dad was really deteriorating, he was very much like he didn't want the boys to see him. They didn't, you know, he didn't want them to have anything to do with them. And I was like, no, this is for me. This was like, no, they need to at least because mm-hmm. in the future, I want them to know that they saw him that Mm -hmm. he was able to tell them that he loved him, it was okay to let him go, that kind of thing, because that's how my dad was. And uh, he was not for it at all. We we argued a lot during that time. And and then um, after my dad passed, it's okay, we went, um, that's when we moved. That's when the whole move came up. It came up six months later. Mm -hmm. And he was like, and the only reason I really agreed to it was because something my dad had said to me is that don't, let the boys know that there is other things out there because mm-hmm. I came from a small farming community. It was a very close knit. Um, the kids I went to kindergarten with, I graduated with, I went to college with. Mm-hmm. Um, so that he wanted the boys to have um, culture, experience life, experience that there's a whole big world out there. Mm-hmm. So I was kind of open at that point, not to mention I was still grieving. Mm-hmm. And so when the move came up, it was like, okay. Let's just do it. Mm-hmm. You know, let's go. And um, so I was very open to that. And I think that um, I think at that point, 
like things didn't go as well for him at his work. He was having problems. He was talking about having problems at work. I don't know what was going on, but I know there was one female he was having a real issue with. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have to question that now. Mm-hmm. What was that issue? Were you right. were you hitting on her too? Right. Because his ex fiance told me he was hitting on people once he once he got laid off. He went to another company. I'm going to have to mute. I'm gonna that's have to, fine. Just so say he went to another company. Then he went to another company, and she told me specifically that he was hitting on young girls there. And I was like, really? I mean, this is somebody that I honestly, I never imagined him being like a player in any way, shape, or form. Mm-hmm. But apparently that's, you know, there was a whole other side to him that I don't know. So do I, I look back now and I think, it was much more calculated than I ever anticipated. I think my dad saw much more mm-hmm. than than I did, and he was trying to warn me. He was trying to be, like right before he passed away on his fifty second birthday. He told me he said he goes, "Don't ever trust him. Just don't trust him." Mm-hmm. I was like, "Why are you telling me this after you know no, twenty some years?" When of he marriage? said that, you just were you like, "Oh, dad," basically. Or, yeah, you just. You get blinded by a certain thing. But, you know, why are you saying this stuff to me? Yeah, like, oh, you're so... Yeah. Yeah, you're just old. You don't know what you're talking about. Right. Uh, He just didn't... He was trying to protect me, but I didn't listen. You never thought about that he is a guy, too? Right. And And he knew. He (laughs) he picked up on it, you know, definitely before I had any clue. You get blinded in a relationship to where... Because they tell you certain things. And we've talked about this before. Where people only tell you what they want to tell you. Right. They only show you the side that they want you to know until they're ready to flip the coin and show the other side. Mm -hmm. They're this one way the whole time. Suddenly they're not. Right. True. And that other side may have been, you know, underneath the surface for a long time. Absolutely. Well, I think now definitely it was. I think that. I was very, um, like I told Ashley, I'm learning that I'm an enabler to a point. Mm -hmm. Like I enabled him to, you know, keep things the way. Everything was status quo, so to speak. And I made sure everything was great, which I thought I was being a great mom, a great wife. Mm -hmm. But maybe I wasn't holding him accountable to our relationship, Mm -hmm. you know, where I, I wasn't demanding certain attention from him when Mm -hmm. I maybe should have been and maybe... You know, we just let him off the hook. I get so, like I said before, my ex was adopted, so I gave her a longer leash than I normally would. Mm-hmm. Where she would say things, I go, "Oh, it's because she had a fucked up childhood." Right. And people were like, "You're mm-hmm. creating." People would tell me, "You're creating a monster." How well you treat her, you're creating a monster. You would you you're giving her too much, you know, ammunition. You're letting her do too many things, which I would never normally do with a normal person. I would say, "You're crazy. You have no idea." Like. And on the same coin, people would say, like, you guys have, like, the best relationship we've ever seen. Mm -hmm. So people would say the same thing. And then, What do you mean by letting her do something? I was going to get into that. So what I mean is, so probably, I want to say two months before she said I'm unhappy, we were out to dinner, me, her, and my parents. We were out getting furniture for the house. Just bought. Mm -hmm. Just bought it. Just bought it. Right off the fucking market. I didn't want this house. I love it now because Ashley and me have created our own yeah, home, you're in that. and we live there now. We mm-hmm. are going to move out of there eventually, but in a rose tattoo, we'll get into it later. That's a good song. <laughs> in a rose tattoo. <laughs> anyway, so we uh, we were at dinner. We went to Delaware to buy stuff because if you don't know, Delaware doesn't have taxes, right. and mm-hmm. we're from Pennsylvania, so you go over there to buy expensive stuff. Right. Anyway, so we went over there to buy furniture. We were looking at furniture. After that, we went to dinner at a certain restaurant. When we went to that restaurant, my ex had commented on the waiter. And even before she said something, I was like, she's going to say something because she doesn't really have, like, she had no filter. Mm -hmm. She was like, well, he's attractive. In front of my parents, and in my head, I was like, I was like, fucked up. What the (laughs) fuck was that shit? Like, I was like, I want to fucking kill her, but I gave her such a long leash Mm -hmm. because she had such a fucking rough childhood. I was like, when we left, I was like, dude, what? Like, you can't say stuff like that. Like, you understand mm-hmm. my parents are there. Right. And I was so naive to what was happening. There were certain things where, specifically stuff like that, where I'll put blinders up. Mm-hmm. Because when it was just us, 
it was so lovey dovey, all that shit. Mm -hmm. And when it was with well, family, whatever, whenever there wasn't somebody outside of, let's say, the circle, right? We were like everybody knew, like we were each other's everything. There was nothing else. Right. But sometimes when somebody will come outside of the circle, there was a problem. Mm -hmm. But it mm -hmm. wasn't like we would argue. I would just say, listen, you can't say shit like that because then people will think this. Not that I think this. That other, other people, people will would. think this. Yeah. In my opinion, with that whole thing. That was already a red flag right there yeah. that you should already mm -hmm. walked away. And I was already I, married with a house. No, I hear what you're saying, but even on that end, it was still you making excuses for her yes. to talk mm -hmm. like that. Because after that person talked like that, it's already deuces. Right. It, it was no conversation after to try to. Because right there, it makes no sense why you said that. And I shouldn't talk to you like a kid telling you what to not say. You feel me? Especially yeah. if we get married and you're supposed to be my work. I'm not marrying a kid that I have to tell you something that's common motherfucking sense to yeah. not to say. Right. You hear what I'm saying? So if you got to talk to an adult like a kid, that's already a flag to not do nothing. And I kind of understand where he's coming from and that you've invested. Okay, so now you're like, okay, we're getting a house together. We're together. Mm -hmm. We're married. You start to think that, I mean, you start to protect that to a certain extent, even though it's not right. No, I know, but that's and what I mean know, by the yeah. excuses. Yeah. Yeah. You do whatever you it takes to make an excuse excuses. to try to keep that. Yeah. But why right. make an excuse on your own happiness? And that's the problem. You're right. That's You're I, exactly I, right, I know looking back now, I know that. Yeah, but I'm right. saying I had to treat her like a child all the time. Mm -hmm. She did not understand words past three syllables. <laughs> and I don't say I use big words. I use, <laughs> I use normal size words. Right. No, you use big words. Okay. Even if, it, so say it's the most easy, like say it's like macaroni. She'd be like, what does that mean? And she's like, oh, well, English is my second language. I think she was fucking like mentally, like I don't think she was all there. I think there was something wrong with her. I think she was born with like alcohol fetus, what's that called? Uh, alcohol fetus Fe syndrome. Yeah. Like she has a lot of. Fetal she, alcohol syndrome. That's it. Mm -hmm. She has a lot of problems and I didn't put it together until like after we broke up, I was like, oh, she didn't connect these dots because of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> her parents left her because she's a piece of shit. But they were also definitely on drugs and there was things like that. Right. And that definitely affected her brain. Sure. And people would be like, you're the only person to ever get like connected to her in a certain way because I was very accepting and at this point, I know now, naive mm -hmm. to what her problems were. Right. And there's no way to fix what her problems are. Right. If somebody is born with fucking cancer, they have cancer their whole life. You can't be nice to cancer and go, oh, these problems are going to go away. Right. That's there for life. And I fucked myself by going, you know what? I'll accept these cancer problems, not understanding that the cancer will come to me. True. It fucked me up, and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm better for it, and I understand how... Right. Better to treat my Ashley. She's rolling her eyes. <laughs> looking and at my Tremaine is right because it's something that my mom said to me um, after the divorce because she was, of course, she was furious, absolutely furious. Of but, course. But she said to me one time, she said, she goes, you know, when you guys first got married, you said you had caught him in a lie. You know, I would caught him in a lie. And I said, and my mom said, so what did you say? And I was like, and I said to my mom, I said, well, he lies sometimes. And she always remembered that. And she told me, she said, she goes, so you you knew then oh, yeah. that he lied, but you were just like, ignored it. Yes, yeah. You it's know? okay. Yeah. It's, it's okay. Just it it's just sometimes. It's not that big a deal. It wasn't something major or anything like that. But he did lie. Yes. Yeah, and, but in that, and in that definition, what is sometimes? Right. You feel me? So. Right. You're but, exactly See, my right. thing was like, she never lied to me mm -hmm. in my mind. She never, because I'm, I will never lie. That's one thing mm -hmm. I will never do. I refuse to lie because I, like I said, it takes away from my word and it takes away from who I am as a person. Right. It takes away from my character. And that's more important to me than anything else is right. who I am. Right. Very fucking straightforward. That's right. But when she would, I didn't count it as a lie because she would explain it to me like, oh, it was just this. And I'm mm -hmm. like, oh yeah. And I would make excuses like Tremaine said. For what the fuck she was saying, and I didn't mm -hmm. take her. I never held her accountable for what, in my mind, was little white lies, right. yeah. which I You're think exactly he was right. gullible. That's all. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm definitely 100. I'm definitely 100. percent And nothing's wrong with gullibleness. It's just that gullibleness people take advantage of, and then that's what's yeah. fucked yeah. up. They but take now I know of. if anyone, I love you, Ashley. But if anyone were to ever <laughs> lie to me, right, that 
offends me like to my core because I don't lie. Right. If I'm like, hey, I'm gonna be somewhere at a certain time where I'm gonna do this, I'm fucking doing it. Mm-hmm. I'm not taking away from that. I'm doing it. Don't care well, what I, I have to do to get. I can speak from experience. Ashley doesn't lie. She's been she's been brutally honest to me, which you know you have to be. No, you have to be. You have to be. Sometimes you really need to hear the brutal truth, even when you know you don't want to hear it. Yeah, like I, it's not saying I didn't that I wanted to hear it, but I know she she's been. Baby, sit down because I got to pee. I want you to oh, hop I in. I need to pee. Yeah. I just can't. <laughs> <laughs> I got to pee. I got to pee too. Oh, you got to talk. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I actually got to pee, but then my name got brought up. But. But no, it's true. I don't you like were... that he says he never lies. Every human lies. Yeah. Everybody lies. You yeah. shouldn't lie about big things, no. but everybody lies. So <sighs> you're I mean, a liar. You've, you've been very honest with me. So. No, no. I I think I'm honest when I think sometimes not him. I don't want him to get like. But sometimes you have to lie to people to spare them. You know. Mm-hmm. Sometimes mm-hmm. I have to lie. Now, in what my do you job. mean to spare them? I mean, like, in my job and stuff like right. that. Like, no, not, again, spare them. I, I not lie, but... Um, make them feel better? Yeah, yeah. like... Um, well, you're dealing with people who have all kinds of yeah, issues. Yeah, but so. I think that you guys talking about your past relationships is great, but, like, the same thing could happen again. You know Definitely. what I mean? It, like, it, nothing is promised. Yeah, yeah. No. And the th- sometimes the way that he talks about his ex, I'm just like... Yeah, doll, you were in a relationship with them. Like, everyone would be that way, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, so it's... Um, not everybody. Again, it goes far back on the gullibleness yeah. and naiveness. That is, is, and again, uh, there's a lot of people but like that. But then, like, how but could I... What if I was doing the same thing as her? He wouldn't even know, probably. But that's the thing. He, he should know. Right. But again... How about you? Like, for me, for well, example... You've that's lied in your life. Don't act like you're fucking... Johnny Appleseed that's never lied and they're fucking That's lying. definitely what they say about John. <laughs> Let Tremaine finish then when I get back to Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> where, where, where am I finishing? Oh, you were in the middle of talking and she said something I thought you were having. Oh, yeah, I said wait, that um, that was just... Uh, the right, sorry. What, I was about to say right flag. You said Johnny something. Appleseed. Uh, what do you think I was about? saying... No, I don't think you've lied. I'm saying you're saying like you look back on things now and you're like, I was naive, I was gullible, I was this, mm-hmm. I was that. We've all done that in relationships. Mm-hmm. You don't realize things until you're... Yes. Until you're out of it. Yeah, that's yeah. why. That's the only reason but I can the, say that now. Could, if you would have asked me like two years ago, I would have fucking fought you to the grave. Right. That she but never that's lied to me. what I. That's what makes we're never. You never recognize things when you're in the moment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's that's why I get so nervous all the time because there were things that like I didn't recognize until I was out of it. Mm-hmm. And this is gonna be the same. No relationship's gonna be perfect, but we just have to take a step back sometimes and be like, okay. I just got to remember, like... I think the problem with the world is because I learned differently. I learned the reason why I never went through nothing, like how in my relationship, because I do something what a lot of guys don't do, and that's listen. So one thing is is that I pay attention and listen. So when I see certain things, again, I was in a relationship before a little bit before I got into middle school or whatever, but I watch all my friends go in relationship. And I can watch them, and I watch how the girl's acting, and I watch how the guy's acting, and I know he's cheating on her, and then she's cheating on him, and seeing how they're playing everything off mm-hmm. so clearly and everything like that. And I'm like, oh, and, okay. Yeah. And then and you can I, learn yeah. the game slowly but slowly. I'm very pers- – I was in a serious relationship till I was in my mid-20s. My last relationship was probably the most serious I've ever been. I was very perceptive of everything that was going on. But when you're in it, it's completely different. Yes, my yeah. first one was in yeah. sixth grade. But yeah. then it went all the way to high school. And then yeah. But again, it was to the point that towards the end, I saw all the triggers and everything mm-hmm. like that. But then we wasn't mad at each other. We both literally talk, went down talking. And I said, yeah, I'm not feeling this no more. Because yeah. you, you sketch me out, this and that, blah, blah, blah. And even though, yeah, she sketched me out, but I'm not trying to be, not be your me friend. Me. Meaning as you're doing weird shit oh, okay. that I don't fuck with. You feel me? So I just, and I'm not going to sit there and act half the time to keep asking you, what are you doing? Are you doing this? There's no reason for me to right. do that with you because if it, if it comes to that point, that means that I don't trust you. Right. So there's no reason for us to continue and whatnot. So, but we became good friends still and everything like that at the end of that. But I just saw something that I didn't like. Yeah. And then I had to run away from. But again. Do you feel like being on high alert like that, though, would make you it be harder to be in a relationship? It would be high alert. Like, I feel like you, like, are saying you're very perceptive of, like, everything going on and, like, do you feel like that makes it harder to like be in a serious relationship because you feel like yes yeah and because i'm so aware of a lot of things and i'm so sketchy 
on feeling like when people do things, don't get it fucked up. There's a lot of people that do things, and that's just how they do shit. You feel me? It could look like they, that's just like a cheating type of me- method they doing and how cool they were guys or something like that. Mm-hmm. But they can really not be that way. But it just, I know 90% of people are like that. Right. But again, do I want to go through that headache? No. So that's why, even though I can like somebody a lot and really, really want to talk to them and every day seeing them and we being cool and I'm like, man, we'd be happy as hell, blah, blah, blah. But I know at the end of the day, it's going to be a headache at the end of it. Well, no relationship's easy. Uh, it's no. Not to, no, no, <laughs> no, that's not the headache I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm talking about the headache of not trusting. There's no reason to even get to a point of relationship yeah. without trust. When right. you don't have oh, trust, sure. there's no reason to continue anything. But I think some relationships start, they start trusting, with it. and then mm-hmm. something. But again, I feel happens. relationship starts very, very fast, like how she was saying before and everything. I think relationships just start like the one girl I'm talking to was two years. Right. You feel me? And I don't think there's to, any right or wrong time. Agree, but, agree. Yeah. But the quickness is a flag no matter what because there's no way you know that person long enough to tell me that you want to spend rest of your life with that person or even spend that much time with that person that you do not know yet and even the two years that i was talking to that one girl i still learned right there that we not going to be able to qu- connect the same way we will be able to even though we're best friends right. and we know we like each other and everything like that it just so won't let me he- work hear me out real quick my ex was with his one before me for 10 years before they got married they got married six months later she cheated on him so they were together 10 years before they... But the, the thing is, you know? is that he probably was gullible in the whole situation of not seeing because she didn't just start cheating then. Right. You got your mind to believe that but for the 10 saying, years that she started cheating You're saying that then. if you go into it too fast, it, it's a red flag. I think I don't think there's any right or wrong time. It's If, the, it's, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. Agree, but the thing is, the best way to walk into a relationship is by knowing that person. That is the main thing. There's no that stupid... Uh, just meet a girl at the club and then say, yo, man, oh, right. I'm feeling her, yo. Like, I think I, yo, I want to ask her out. Damn. You just met her at the club. What right. do you know about her? But then how do you get to know someone if you don't hang out with them? No, be friends. But yeah, everybody's yeah. always quick to fuck and then make emotions hit everything. That's right. what I mean. Like, why do you even to the point, and sex is a big thing. You don't get it fucked up. Everybody want to have sex, especially party and everything like that. But when y'all make it a one number one goal, a lot of emotions in play now. So now the girl or the boy thinking now the boyfriend and girlfriend, this and that, and now y'all feel like you're obligated on a certain case when y'all just start talking for a week now and this and that. And then when you only go out a week, you're spending most of your time now with that one person. That's not because you want to be friends with them. You want to go and spend that time because that's your boyfriend or that's your girlfriend. Mm-hmm. You don't even want to get to know that person because that's your boyfriend or your girlfriend. You don't right. even wait for that time because know. when you go and chill with that boy and girl, you're not sitting down and talking about, yo, like, what's up about you? No, you kissing, y'all trying to fuck, y'all going out and you're partying. You're no. not doing that's the right protocol. That's when the old school comes in because like in my relationship, I don't think that like it was, I mean, we were friends and I'd known him, but like we didn't start dating until you know what six months after we knew each other yeah that's how it and and so it was like dating so it was kind of you know you guys talk about me being old school i don't feel like i'm old school i still feel like i'm in my 20s but like i was in college and i'd had you know the one night stands or the you know quick hookup and that's it and like with my ex it was not i didn't feel that at all it was more i felt I truly did love at first sight and like it was like all of a sudden I felt like we were connected and he said he felt the same way so I trusted that yes and that's the only problem is that the whole problem right there is quick and then don't get it twisted I'm not Mm -hmm. saying you can't find love at first sight. I'm not saying that I'm just saying that the only way that can work and you won't know this is the other person has to feel the same exact Way. Right. If he doesn't, true. and in no way you will know, just because they say it, I don't mean that that's true. Then how do you really ever know that way? But that's the thing. Is I believe in energy. You have to b- know by their energy. You have to right. feel it, if that makes sense. Like, you got to look in that person in their eyes and speak to them. And I can talk to somebody, and you can just know when somebody's lying to you. And you really getting serious about your conversations and this and that. But a person will show their true selves at a moment. It, it's always happening. It just always has to happen. Yeah. Everybody but that has to change. But, but that could happen 20 years later. Agreed. And that's what I'm saying. I was just about to say that at yeah, no time exactly. of when it's going to spread right. out. But that's the only sickening part to feel like. And that's why I don't trust yet. You feel me? It's not like I don't think that this person will definitely be good or nothing like that. It's just that I just don't feel like I'm ready to go through that 
And that's good that you recognize it. Yeah. yeah. And I don't want to put nobody through something and everything like that. Yeah. But don't get it twisted. We can be friends, have fun, and do whatever, blah, blah, blah. But again, I don't want to bring it to an emotional level yet. Yeah. Cause and I think you can be like, yeah, it was 27 years and he robbed me of that. I, and that I don't believe I don't believe he robbed you. I believe right. he taught you he, yeah. as well as you, like you, lo- you, you, you. It's a lesson that you always you don't want to forget because right. number one, obviously, you got three beautiful kids, right. so that's already a blessing right. itself. And then again, you saw that how you were hurt, and now you can now teach somebody um, signs exactly. and stuff like that. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's never a fail or why it happened, nor do you want to think it was a fail. You want to always take the positive out of it Absolutely. because you want to make your mind into a more positive. You think a negative, and you're going to think more about the situation. Et cetera, et cetera. But no, I've learned an awful lot about myself. Exactly. That's what and I mean. You, and you and learn you, about yourself. And exactly. you sit and look back on, you know, okay, so where did I go wrong? Because it's all about, yes, him, and and, and don't get me wrong, he was an asshole. Yeah, he, he absolutely. Did, so. he, he yeah. didn't have to do any of this that went on. But at the same point, I see my participation in exactly. it. Exactly. Exactly. And, so and that's now, good. So now, hopefully, you. I'll have opportunity to have a relationship again exactly but, but now you'll be more aware but no i don't enter that date <laughs> no, <laughs> i'm still scared of that <laughs> i want to get into what the fuck white people and i'm not going to set this clip up at all i just want us to enjoy it together and is this i want to let i want to let yeah this okay. is the one i want to let you know that this is like a first date kind of setup Leave it going, leave it going for me. Leave me the noise. <laughs> Hello, fellow birdies. Who can eat 19 nuggets faster? Nineteen nuggets and a large fry. Now this is special for the fun people. This is a sexual thing for some people to remember. Oh yeah. This noise? I'll explain it. I've been done already. Alright, we can we can we can stop it, Tremaine. You can So this is called ASMR. I don't know what the acronym means. But ASMR we've watched one of these clips before. Do you remember that, Tremaine? Halloween episode. You remember it? Remember the girl was uh, casting a spell? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So ASMR is basically where they don't talk. They just make noise. Now, all right. Q hit uh, minimize on this video. Now, this this video obviously is bullshit, right? <laughs> like, this is stupid. Who the fuck will watch this? I would have been done already. <laughs> I'll tell you who will watch it. Go down. Let's see how many of you watch this. I can't see that far. How many people watch this? 16,000 says they liked oh it, gosh. and 1,001 people Didn't said they like don't it. like it. So there's 4,000. 5,064. 968. So over 500,000 people have watched this yes. video. Basically, six. So there's people out there that enjoy the sound of people eating. And this is called mukbang. Mukbang is videos of people eating. Exhort big amount, a lot of food. <laughs> Does video matter? Does in this, I think it has something to do with the sex thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, I, I mean, those people are both weird looking, but <laughs> there's definitely a sexual component to ASMR. I just don't That's know what crazy. the sexual part is. Yeah, like, don't get it fucked that. up. Food is sometimes, yo, know, food could turn me on sometimes. You know, yeah, food is delicious. Yeah. Cooked, you feel me? But, uh, the noises though, that's one. Yeah. Oh, I don't. I don't like the noise of people eating. But so mukbang. I hate that. Mukbang specifically is a video of people eating a lot of food. ASMR 
is just noises that normally it has a sexual component to it. Like when people whisper. So we, yes. Yeah, so so when you put the two together. Remember we watched that it's one crazy. video where the one person was getting covered in food was called splashing. That does sound familiar. Delco, remember when Delco Dolls? Delco, we did that's video. that far back. That's that's, right. that's a lot. That's like four or five I months ago. I think I remember, yeah, but I can't fully So splashing is a video. Of, there was these two guys, and the one guy was covering the other one in food. Oh, God. And, uh, like degrading, like, oh, you little whore. And he loved it. Oh, and he was rubbing his dick him. and all kinds <laughs> of good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so this one has oh my. this one has a lot of components. I mean, there's a lot of things going on here. I mean... Um, it's they, this I, actually I see is nothing sexual. Yeah, I was more upset that they didn't touch it. the nuggets yet. I was pretty upset. Well, <laughs> if you want to see, we go ahead. There be, there's I'm not watching the whole thing. Uh, hold on. You get the full screen. We can go back to the nuggets, bro. Let I me know where you go. Eat All right, the so nuggets two, first, then maybe the fries. But so we're going ahead to where we at? All right, nuggets yeah, start being at two twenty nine. We're going to two twenty nine for the nuggets. Two thirty nine. Two thirty nine. They already ate all the fries. That was so many fries. Oh, God. This is a, this is a race. He's going to win. He's already like, so bad. Oh, double nugs, bro. Double nugs. Double nugs. All right, her yeah. expressions is killing me. It's just too much. <laughs> sure, her, like, what the hell are you so excited for? You know, now, you know, it, Tremaine, I'm saying if we started doing this, we would get hundreds of thousands of views. I would be done with food already. But I'm saying it's about the noise. <laughs> like, we drink on the show, right? Maybe we, I mean, I have done this before. Listen, first of all, I just told you I don't like that noise. I don't like the noise I either. when I eat and people is... open their mouths and they eat. Oh, yeah. That's but a huge for money, turn-off. bro? Like you're just sitting, you eat on this show every goddamn day. You have so much fast food. If all we did was release ASMR videos, like fuck Christmas, we get a present every you day know of the how year. You like grab like a fork or something and scratch it on a damn plate. I don't like that. That's no. what chewing food is like to yeah, me. Yeah, I don't like it either. It skis me out. But for like it gets my nerves thinking well, about. Imagine exactly, making I money for it. Fucking thing. I don't give a fuck. They I'm made, not doing it. They probably made thousands of dollars just eating nuggets. I could do porn right now if I wanted to, and I, maybe I, they tell me I gotta do a gay one. Do I do it? Cause they told me to give me a billion dollars. Fuck no. Well, wait. How much money would it cost for you to do a gay porn? Okay, if I didn't say a billion, what what, what part didn't you get? A billion dollars. What? All right, for a billion dollars, what would you do? Like, would you touch a penis for a billion dollars? No, I'm not just gonna touch. Really? A penis. No, touch a penis for a billion dollars? No. Well, you already <laughs> touched a penis. Like, you can put gloves on. Then yeah, I do it with gloves on. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, how much money would it really, literally cost you for no to touch a penis like th- with your glove to jerk off a penis until? Oh, you are so wrong. <laughs> Let's say my penis. Like we're we're, we're <laughs> really good friends. <laughs> how much money do I have to get out of the bank? Like five thousand dollars? Can you touch my dick until it comes? No. Ten thousand no, dollars. Doesn't, doesn't work like that. I had ten thousand dollars sitting. For- I had ten thousand dollars sitting in front of me until this joy came up. How much would you would do it for ten thousand dollars? Come on, man. No. Twenty thousand dollars. You're saying that you want some money. You <laughs> <laughs> said you want somebody to jerk off. <laughs> no, you didn't even say touch the dick down to this point. You said grab the dick, jerk it off until it fucking somebody's nut. Let's nah. say let's say I'm a minute man. I'm coming in a minute. I don't give a fuck. It's That's sixty so- seconds of jerking yeah. me off. <laughs> How much money would it really cost? Come on. How much? You wrong, man. You <laughs> wrong. <laughs> 60 seconds. <laughs> 60 so seconds. You, and the video doesn't have to show your face. Like Nobody knows it was you. No, I'm okay. I'm okay. I think I like, got to live with that for the rest of my life. That's what you got to remember. I saw um, a movie. I can't remember. The name. It was on Netflix, which is a true story, where this guy, he was, oh, what the fuck was it called? I can't remember what the name of it was, but he loved this little girl. And what he did was he made... He made the mom and the dad both fall in love with him too. So his thing was getting power over. So what happened was he was like, so I'm so unhappy in my relationship. I just can't stand this. Like 
I haven't had sex in months to the dad. And the dad wound, wound up just jerking him off. And he held that as blackmail. And then he made the mom fall in love with him. Is it? Where, the, where he... Uh, yeah. No, 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 no. This is a true story. This is not fake stuff. It sounds like American Beauty. It does. This is not fake American stuff. Beauty. Like, yeah. this guy kidnapped a girl not once but twice from the same family. And he blacked out the mom and the dad into letting this happen two times. Oh, my God. Oh, I think I remember hearing about that on Netflix. Yes, it's on Netflix. Yes. It's fucking crazy. Yeah, it was a documentary. I remember this. I can't remember the name of it, but holy shit. It. Yes, I remember that. Like totally if, remember that. Like, if me and Tremaine were to, like, to be driving here, he was like, you know what? I haven't had sex in a while. Yeah. Please just touch Please my dick. There's no me. fucking way. No, but like, right. I remember But, like, that. 50 grand? Yeah. I'll get Tremaine to come. He's <laughs> 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 trying to say <laughs> for fifty thousand dollars, that's a lot of money. I mean, that's it gonna buy hit, that's gonna buy like a cool. Yeah, I don't know a fifth of my house. I mean, that's yeah, a lot of money. And I can move, I can finally move out of my house. Right. Sixty seconds until Tremaine comes. I mean, all I have to do is <laughs> this. Like, I can do that now for sixty seconds for fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> like the penis, a penis, a dick is a dick. Tremaine, really? It's just a muscle. An organ. Uh, it's more. a muscle. So speaking of, a, all right. So let's speaking get Speaking of fifty-four years, it's a muscle. Let's get back. <laughs> let's get back into Jamie. <laughs> so Jamie. Yes. Will you ever be able to trust again? Mm, that's a good question. Let's get back into Wyoming. Did you trust him? I did. Why? I, um, because he knew me, and he knew my my. He had he had my history. Mm-hmm. Like, he knew where I grew up. He knew my family. He knew everything about me. So I trusted him unconditionally, which was a big mistake. How long before you started trusting him right away? Uh, I, mean, I, I did. I trusted him right away, which was a big mistake. And we broke up. Like, before he had a stroke, mm-hmm. um, I, we were together for two years. And then I broke up and for a year. So total, I was only with him for two years. And then he had a stroke, and I haven't been with him for Hold on. So you guys are you guys are together two years. Mm-hmm. When you break up, what? First off, why did you break up? Um, his drinking. He was really bad drunk. Okay, which, so was Ashley. But anyway, <laughs> no, he was no, he was a bad drunk. He was like, I should have not. My after when I told you I went off the rails, I had I had my first DUI one month after I moved out of the house. Okay, so and it was he was involved in it. He would we would gone to a bar, mm-hmm. and it was burger night. Had burgers. I'd had three beers. That's all I had. I had two um, Yinglings and a flying bitch, mm-hmm. and I was like, I was okay. We were only in like a mile from the apartment that I lived in, mm-hmm. but he wanted out of the car. I let him out of the car, and then he wouldn't get back in the car. So. A deputy sheriff came by. He was really cool. He was just trying to get him in the car, too. But a state trooper came by and asked if the deputy needed any help. And the deputy said no. He had it all under control. Mm -hmm. But the trooper decided to keep pushing the issue. Come to find out, his kid played lacrosse with my son, and my youngest son, and he knew he was a coach, my ex was a coach. You gotta stop saying. I names. know. I'm sorry. <laughs> My ex is a coach. You gotta definitely edit this one. Yeah, no <laughs> wow. Well. <laughs> but my ex is a coach and um, took me to down to you know the station, the barracks. Let him let you know Wyoming go, mm-hmm. and I ended up at the um, barracks. And they tested me, and the gal she even told me the one that t- did my. Um, uh, testing, she said, she goes, you need to report this trooper because it was all personal. Mm-hmm. What the hell are you doing with this guy? Mm-hmm. Did you look up this guy's, do you know this guy's record? He's got this, 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 and this. And he goes, your ex is a coach, very well respected, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, mm-hmm. respected? At that point, I was like, really? Mm-hmm. And um, But I was mortified, and I was devastated. I was humiliated and embarrassed mm-hmm. and um, knew my kids would eventually find out about this and which they did. And um, I don't, I, I don't keep 
much from my kids. They know mm-hmm. they know everything. I mean, there's nothing. I refuse to lie to them. Mm-hmm. And um, even though it's hard for me sometimes to take on the, the onslaught from them, mm-hmm. it's at least I'm true to them. They know that I don't lie to them. Good. So they knew they knew everything that went on. I told my oldest and my middle, and um, but it was it was humiliating, hard. And then I got a PBJ, probation before judgment. Mm-hmm. So I was supposedly supposed to be let off, but then they changed the law, mm-hmm. where where it'll still show up on your, you know, record after that. So, and then, it was one year later. Well, no, it was just December. Uh, it was, yeah, December of the f- same year. Um, that was my lowest point. And I ran into a tree intentionally. I was drinking. Mm-hmm. And they picked me up. Newcastle, it was in Delaware, though. They mm-hmm. picked me up. And um, I was just fortunate enough to be able to afford a good attorney. And um, I was able to get off there. But, of course, the judgment's still there. And I had to go through the classes and... Do I had to do everything I was supposed to do, but um, it was a pretty rough. I spent that. That was the first night I ever spent in jail. Now, when you say you ran into the tree intentionally, mm-hmm. you were drinking, correct? I was drinking, and I was done. And did you want to die? Mm-hmm. Definitely. I wanted to die a lot of times before that, but that was the first time that I actually had a stupid attempt of, you know. Oh. And sometimes. And I'm not even going to lie, even sometimes after that, I wish I had just, it had succeeded, Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, I struggle with that, Mm -hmm. even now. Because for me, that was, you know, my life, that was my life. And Mm -hmm. I felt like um, it was just taken away from me. Mm -hmm. And and that I wasn't good enough. Definitely fought, fight that all the time, that Mm -hmm. you're not good enough. And um, I failed. It was failure. It was, you know, all that. And um, so I, I struggle with that. And so trust again, probably not. Mm-hmm. I don't think, I don't know that I'll ever be able to trust somebody. And um, I hope I can, but um, it's still going to take a while. Yeah, the driving into a tree thing, I I had, there was one night specifically where I went out with some girl and I came home. Like I drove like an hour and a half for this girl. We went on a date, and the date was just weird. I didn't like it. But it was also a direction where me and my ex would drive a lot to go on a certain type of vacation. I won't say the end result. But we would drive this way. Mm-hmm. And on the drive home, I remembered all the things we would talk about and do during the drive home. Mm-hmm. So it hit me really hard. And I was thinking about I was going like 100 miles an hour. I was like, I can just turn the wheel a little bit. And it'll be over. Mm-hmm. I won't have to think about this anymore. And luckily, I had a friend, uh, Rebecca, who's was on one of the first episodes, and she came back on this past episode. So mm-hmm. definitely watch her episode. She definitely helped me a lot. Who talked me out of killing myself so many times? I don't think anybody's ever talked somebody out of killing myself more than she talked me out of killing myself because I was so close to killing myself almost every day for right. four or five months. It took me a long time to realize yeah. that I didn't want to die mm-hmm. because I was so ashamed of my past. Like, I couldn't even keep together a relationship that was so strong. People were like, how is it even possible that you are not together anymore? How could this oh. be? Yeah. So, I was just, I, one, it was shame. Two, it was just like, I didn't even know how to move on. Right. But luck, again, I, I couldn't be any more lucky that I found Ashley. Like, mm-hmm. And... You, right. We like I said, we both went through our traumas, and we're both there for each other, and we both understand our past. It takes, and I was lucky; I found her enough, right. like early enough, because still, it could it could have been possible I would have killed myself because it was still when I first met her, I was still thinking about it. Mm-hmm. But she really was there for me, to where I like this podcast came before her, and this was definitely easing the situation. But there were still suicidal thoughts nonstop. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because, like, again, you act like you're happy, but you're really not. And you really do want to just end the shit because right. what the fuck's the point? Right. But I was lucky enough to where I found her in a very important part of my life. And I you think do. I do. Fe- you sit and think, this is it. I just go to work. I come home. 
Mm-hmm. My boys are living their life, which is what they're supposed to be doing, mm-hmm. and I want them to be doing. Um, but there's, but that was the, such a huge gap because I was a mom. That was, that was my identity. Mm-hmm. And so to get back to where I was before I got married, which was in my twenties, and you know, try to remember who that person was. Yeah, that person's come, not even real. Back, it's not even around. I'm not even the same person I was, even a, you know six months ago yeah I'm not i mean it's constantly changing and and sometimes yeah especially around the holidays you go wow you know this this is hard and yeah you know did do i really do my boys really need me i know they do mm-hmm. i know they love me and mm-hmm. i know that but you you're no longer i'm no longer validated by that mm-hmm. so i have to rely on myself to validate who i am and when you're not 100% in your own corner mm-hmm. thinking that, you know, what's what's wrong with you? Mm-hmm. What, what did I do wrong? Why did, you know, why didn't this person who I vowed to love the rest of my life not think I was good enough? Mm-hmm. You just totally second guess everything. And if I can't, if I couldn't, because I knew I was a good mom and I knew I was a good wife, mm-hmm. if I can't fulfill that, then how do I fulfill anything else in my mm-hmm. life? I mean, I can work and go to work and all that, but that's just, you know, repetitive, mm-hmm. you know, hamster in the wheel sort of thing. It's not fulfilling. I'm not doing anything that's fulfilling. So how do you start dating again after the, all these years? So 27 years. Oh, my God. So after, <laughs> so like I said earlier, I talked about earlier where after she told me, my ex told me she was unhappy. I was like, I just want to get on a dating website just to mm-hmm. put it out there. But I didn't even do anything on there for months. I had messages and all that stuff, but like, I couldn't even like talk to them. Earlier in previous episodes, I talked about how I went to a yoga session just to be around, fe- <laughs> just to be around <laughs> girls. Because in, uh-huh. in the moment, I wanted to kill all girls. Like I was like, everyone that I, every woman that I meet, uh-huh. I will fucking kill them. <laughs> and just being around them, one, it was a reason for me to be sober because it was almost impossible for me to be sober. Right. Because I just wanted to drink until I died. Mm-hmm. Secondly, it was just being around other people. Thirdly, it was being around females specifically because I had a big fear. And I went through I went through a lot of um, therapy to get me to where I could be around. So it took months for me to get through this therapy to be around women again. Right. To even, like, have a conversation. Like, I would never trust – at that point, I would not be able to trust them. Mm-hmm. But to have a conversation with a woman, like, I would be filled with so much rage. And I had to, like, learn these techniques. And I was doing it subconsciously. What I would do is my hands would ball up in a fist because mm-hmm. I almost wanted to – everyone I met, I almost wanted to punch them in the face. Punch them. <laughs> so what I would do is I would rub my <laughs> hands against my thighs uh-huh. to keep them straight. So I, Because in my mind, I was still a good person. Right. But my anger was so real. Right. I was like just – even if I went to Wawa and I was buying something and the cash register, the, the cashier was a woman, mm-hmm. I would be filled with such rage. Wow. I was yeah. so angry. Mm-hmm. It was so difficult for me just to talk to a woman. Right. So I had to go through therapy, and then I went through yoga, and there was a bunch of different steps that I had to take to be able to talk to a woman without anger. And when I first started dating, there was still that anger there. Mm-hmm. Like everything a woman would say on a date, I was like, I don't fucking believe you. I don't believe you, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, 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 sure, yeah, 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 yeah. Go fuck yourself. Right. I didn't trust it. Right. And luckily, I went through you know a bunch of different steps. And I found Ashley at the perfect time where. What, what are you confused about, baby? What are you confused about? Tell me what you're confused about. I don't know, because, like, I don't understand how many different than any other girl that you'd. Like. What, do you mean? what made. What do you think it was time that made you okay? Well, it, with? it gave. It, time was. Gave me the understanding to trust you, like, to be open to you. There was time that had to be taken. In order for me to be open to something new. Okay. But what made you different than any other girl? I just want to come over and get a compliment. <laughs> she wanted to get a compliment. <laughs> Do tell. Like, I'm just so kidding. So our first night, I think we talked about it in our uh, the podcast with just me and you. Uh, we on the first night. Do you want me to get into it? Or no? I don't care. First <laughs> night, she came over, <laughs> and we and. She, we uh, slept together the first night. Uh, <laughs> but the next day we woke up, and what happened the next day when we woke up was we connected as friends right away. Like We had talked for a little while. We had talked for almost some – well, 
We talked for like I remember we talked for like a week through text. But I'm talking about the first night. I know I'm saying like you're acting like we just like met online and then we met up the first night. Like we had. Oh yeah, the, yeah, yeah. We, we had talked a lot over the phone. Yeah, we we had talked a that. lot. But what changed was the I next. Wasn't just like hey. Yeah. <laughs> what, <laughs> what changed was the next day. We had sat down and watched. I think we watched TV together. We just had a conversation. It was just a conversation where. I told her this about a week ago where, you know, when you're playing a video game. All right, Tremaine, you're younger. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't so, play video games. Let's, say you, were to, let's say you were to play a video game and you went over to your friend's house and they had all the same levels unlocked and their customized character looked just like yours. Okay. Like we were so connected in everything we do. She can finish my sentences, which nobody can ever finish my sentences because who knows what the fuck I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way to know. <laughs> but we just are like so like like mentally we're like our jokes. Before I say a joke, she fucking says it. And nobody takes a joke from me. <laughs> and she takes all of my jokes at home. <laughs> and it just like our ability to laugh together and fucking – it was just it, I've never, I've never dealt with that. Like I've never felt like that emotionally before, where somebody was able to connect with me because nobody understands all my jokes, and right. even she gives me shit all the time. But before I say a joke, she's fucking there to fucking capitalize on it. And I hate when people steal my jokes. I hate it. <laughs> but I'm, she's, here, I'm here stealing your jokes. But we've no, seen all was, the same I, movies. We know all the same quotes. We know all the same shit. No, I was just because it seemed like you were very like enraged for a while and i was just wondering when that transition happened because i don't think it was just like me walking in your door and being oh, no. like yo what's up but like, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> like no 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 I'd i go, was trying to understand like i had to go through the therapy yeah. the therapy was a big part of it and i didn't like the therapy because one i, I don't like therapy. talking about myself and i'm supposed to promote I hate it, it and i hate it i, I, don't I feel like, like this is therapy for you oh uh, this is 100 yeah. therapy yeah. this yeah. is yeah. definitely therapy. therapy and that's one of the main therapy. this is one of the main reasons i started because when i was going through the depression where I wanted to kill myself. There was nothing for me to watch where mm -hmm. I was like, maybe there's a light at the end of the tunnel. There was nothing right. specifically about relationships where I could look forward to the future. It was all like Hollywood bullshit. Like, of course Scar Scarlett Johansson found a fucking another guy. She's right. the hottest woman in the world. Right. Of course that shit happens. Mm -hmm. But like everyday people don't have somewhere to look to to be like, that's my North Star. I can understand that I could get there again. Right. Because in Hollywood, of course, of course they get there again. They're the best looking people in the world. I'm not. I get that shit. Right. I'm very average looking. That's why I think, I don't think my voice matters at all. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why I wanted to start this so people could understand that even the most average person could restart their life again after love. And when he first started this, we, I think your first episode, we had just hung out for like the first time. So you didn't go in this with the intention of being like, oh, you can find love after. Like, you were just like, oh, no. there's life. <laughs> I was very no, against No, there's life after. Yes, so You know, I beginning. mean, that's the whole point of it. It doesn't mean love. Like, there's life yeah. after mm -hmm. shit. Like, yeah, so in the beginning, yeah, I, I started this as maybe there's life after love because I just, when I started doing this, I mean, I had the idea for a while, but it took me a while to realize I didn't want to kill myself. So I realized there was life after love. And hearing mm. you two talk about that, like, I was getting, like, so emotional over there because you guys are, like, two of my, like, favorite people in the world. <laughs> so to hear you two think that you, like, ha had nothing to live for like that, like, oh, it kills oh, And we're me. not the only people. There's a I lot know, of people out there. I know that. that but, yeah. Like, there's so I know. many people out there but, that like, want to kill themselves. But, like, it's just, right like, now. I hope that people, if anyone's ever experiencing this, know that, like, he, I heard these two saying that, and I'm just sitting back there, like, I can't believe that you two would think that about yourselves because you two are so fucking amazing. And I know you're not in that place now, but, like, even when you're at your lowest point, like, there are still people that care, even if you don't talk to them every day, if you don't see them every day, if you, even if you only, you know, I mean, like, there's people that that care about you, and even though you might not care about yourself, like, it's just crazy for anyone to feel that way. Like, even if you've done something wrong, like... It's crazy, but it's so easy. It's so, I know that. I it's know so that. easy to get to that point. Mm -hmm. All it, it is. takes is one person to push you to that point. But it also takes one person to pull you back. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. Well, no, no, no. It Definitely. takes a team. No. No, it does Actually, not. was a big part of it, but there was a huge team that pulled no, me back. No, but I'm saying, dad. like, it could take one sentence from one person to make you realize yes. that life is worth living. I mean, but after, after my ex left me, my eyes, we can talk about, Rebecca talked about this. My eyes literally turned black. I have blue eyes. Mm -hmm. 
my eyes turned black. I lost like 30 pounds. I couldn't even, my voice was different. I wasn't the same person. Right. Because everything I knew before that point was mm -hmm. a lie. Right. So but I had exactly nothing. Right. Yeah. But I actually think that he needed to go through that to realize a lot of things in life. You know what I mean? Like, you have, look at look at it now. Like, it's not just me. Like, I'm just, I'm this much in the big picture. But, like, even, like, the podcast, having a dog, you know, mm -hmm. like, having your own house. Like, all those things, like. I think that you had to go through that. And it, obviously it fucking sucks. And I think you still have some resentment. I'll have res and and you should. If you went through a breakup like that, fuck there your was, ex. Fuck my ex. Fuck your no, exes. No, and if you just say. get over that shit, I think you're the yeah. problem. We are here to fucking tell your exes to go fuck yourself. <laughs> go on. I'm sorry, baby. Because I, <laughs> I think too many you people... You had to go through that. I think if your life was easy peasy... Got married, had a white picket fence. I don't think that. I think. It, I think that one day you would have realized that things were not right, and it would have not taken her doing what mm -hmm. she did. You would have realized mm -hmm. eventually, and you would have been so deep into it that you would have been like, "Fuck, right. like I'm fucked." Right. You know, what like I mean? me. Yeah. Because I was deep into it, I thought. So I actually was think what she great. did was a blessing, and mm -hmm. even if I was just your friend, I would tell you that because I think that you knew that there was something not right, but it took that. Mm -hmm. Should I thought she likes me for me, <laughs> not because I drink Belgian beers and steal for them <laughs> or for the rears of boyfriends' butts. This is okay. just an yeah. idea all day long. We're not, we just make up songs. Oh my so god, stupid! <laughs> it makes no sense. None of the songs, make, and they're all geared towards cash. By yeah, the way, usually and they're about cash. We're like, he licks his dick and he loves it. <laughs> <laughs> because I remember when he first started licking his dick, she was like, "Oh, it's so disgusting." I was like, I, "I'm, I'm just jealous that he can do, he can it. do it." No, I was, <laughs> I was so sad when he, I first saw his Red Rocket, which was like a month ago. I was like, "No, he's a teenager." I was it's like, "He's so I was like, he's supposed to be a little baby." And now get a toy. And I'm like, oh, "It happens. No. They just grow up." I mean, you have three boys, so you probably experience that. Yeah, well, wait, all right, all right, good question. Hold. Uh oh. Hold oh the phone. God, I'm scared. Where's the phone at? I don't have a phone, but hold it. <laughs> have you ever walked? Oh, God. Have you ever realized that one of your boys were masturbating? Like, yeah, of course. Uh, wait, wait. Of have course. you ever walked in on it? I've not walked in on it, but. Have you ever, like, cleaned the sheets kind of thing? Or yes, like, absolutely. Obviously. How do you know as a mom? Absolutely. How do you know? She's well, not, she's one a woman. of them came and told me that <laughs> there was something that happened last night. And I don't know what it was. <laughs> I love and it was that. by himself? If it I ever have himself. a son, I'll be huh? like, yes. How yeah. old was he? Yeah, he was young, like, you know, seven, eight. Aww, eight old years guy. old? You yeah, come at eight years it. old? Are you kidding? Even little, little, yeah. I mean, it's I know. it's real. It happens. And he yes, said, like, mommy, mom, something happened with my penis? It? Yeah. My, why is it hard? Oh, <laughs> you know, I mean, but that's just natural. I yes, I, I just find and then it fascinating. That's when you, it's always nice when you have a spouse and you can right. go, hey, hey, you talk this is them. your territory, not my territory. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. I always want. But I, yes. Yeah. See, I always thought but it was wet weird. Wet dreams are definitely part of the family conversation. Wet dreams are made of these. <laughs> Who am I to disagree? Girls go through things like that, too. It's not the same thing, but. <clears throat> What's it like? It's like, um, it's not a wet dream, obviously, but like you'll like, uh, I don't, maybe I'm just speaking for myself, but like when I was like in like fourth or fifth grade, like I like accidentally like rubbed down there, like I don't know, I was just like maybe getting out of the shower or something like that, and I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> I was like, Good. wait, this is a, uh, what if I kept doing this? <laughs> wait, Tremaine, what's the first? Do you remember the first time you masturbated? it? Second grade, I was kidding. <laughs> I would say around like fifth-ish. How did you do it? Do you remember how you did it? I watched porn. What do you mean? Like, <laughs> no, how did you like? How did you figure out like what you were doing? It was like Cinemax After Dark. Like. Cinemax um, after dark I, exactly. I, I, just, I just watched. Um, no, I had the VCR drum. My brother had, had a shit load of them drums. Yeah, but uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I I'm gonna be dead ass. The only thing I can truly remember is that I was just beating my meat, you know. And um, again, why well, did she? I, I agree. Right. Agree. Don't know. <laughs> but I was beating my meat, and I remember what, when when I was started coming, I was like, what the. What? <laughs> <laughs> So, like, I'm like, this again. What is this? 
See, oh, this is messy, uh, but it felt good. I gotta do that again, and then yeah, that's, yeah, again, that again, shit again, was again. incredible. I think the first time. All right, so the first time I missed. For a while, I don't think I came, but what I would do is I would like hock a loogie on my yeah, hand. Oh, no, stop! I agree. You know how I disgusting. feel about that. I know it's disgusting. Oh my god! And I would just rub my dick until it felt good. Oh, off, oh, stop. Oh, I could deal with poop, pee, oh, vomit, oh, blood, but for some reason, oh, I'm disgusted by loogies are like. Just how you say it, like you could have said, I spit. He was like, <laughs> yeah, it was weird, and it was like, it wasn't like I was like, there were some spits that were better, like I'm like. That wasn't good enough. I had to get the, the back and the throat oh, thing. Oh, God. And I don't think, I definitely didn't come for a while. You it was just like the that feel. You would use something else that. Never mind, we'll talk about it later. Wait, what, did I, what did I tell you? What did I say? Hi, you scared girl. What the fuck? Like, oh. a, like a massager thing? Oh, uh, yeah. I, would use, I mean, I would, whatever I could do to my dick to make it do good things, I would do it. I remember, like, being, like, in places that, like, this is how I knew that there was. <laughs> I, I, would, piece, so go I would be like oh, sorry mom and dad but I'd be like at my grandma's house like 12 years old and be like I need to go in the bathroom and like rub one out oh I gotta pee oh my god <laughs> I hate that I have to pee right now why don't I have to pee no. 12 years old you said oh. see and I don't think I ever really realized well I used to always watch. I didn't know it was wrong Like, well it's not wrong it's not but like wrong, I didn't know yeah. that it was something that like, I wasn't like doing it in front of people but right. like I was just like I would like be just like doing like things like with my family or like be mm-hmm. at school or something and I would be like I really need to go mm-hmm. and like <laughs> Yeah, right. that's not normal. I don't know. No, like, it is normal. Cause uh, I used to read all my mom's. Remember Harold Robbins? No books. <laughs> Robin they, books. Harold Robbins. He was, was like a, he intimate, was like soft like, porn. Uh, I I writer. do remember reading books like that. And my yeah. mom had all those books, and I would like get all excited and stuff when I'd read them. But like I never actually. You knew what it yeah, was right. Yeah, I didn't actually masturbate until what Down and Out in Beverly Hills or that movie where um, the girl from. Orange is the new black. The real kinky hair. She's got, she's blonde, got really like a huge mane of hair. And she was in the movie and she went into a bathroom and she started masturbating with me, or she had a dildo. And I was like, oh, (laughs) that's what I was supposed to be doing all this time. Because, yeah, because I was raised, you don't do that. You know, you don't do that. But I remember. I wasn't raised that you shouldn't do it, but it wasn't something that you were, like, openly talking about. But I do remember my friend who I'm still friends with when we were younger. And I'm not going to say her name because she'd probably be so embarrassed. But, like, (laughs) in fourth and fifth grade, like, I remember saying to her, I remember being like, hey, have you ever, like, like touch yourself mm-hmm. and she was like yeah and I was like did it feel really good and she was like yeah I was like so you go in the other room and I'll go in this room and we'll do it and then we'll go talk about it talk about it exactly yeah <laughs> we it's were like, like dead. Yeah. oh god what a weirdo <laughs> oh, I have stories I want to tell but I'm not going to tell <laughs> I need somebody else here to tell them because I want to be right Robbie? to tell them yeah <laughs> <laughs> Robbie we got to tell these stories bro come on Robbie if you guys don't know Robbie was the person that was the co-host for the first like four episodes, he's been my best friend since I can remember. But we have some good stories to tell. So Robbie, gotta come back home, bro. He will not tell them. No, I mean I think the first like time, first couple times we try to record, or record it. Like the first when we first started this podcast, uh-huh. we did it without sending them out. It was just me and him just talking, and it definitely came up. Oh really? It definitely <laughs> came up, and it was. I think it was fucking. Great con, like it was really funny. Just me and Robbie, because me and Robbie have grown up, I think, our whole lives. Like, I yeah. don't remember. Well, that's what was nice about having three sisters when I was, because this was like something that I could talk about, especially with Laura, like, because mm-hmm. she's, her and I are very similar when it comes to that kind of stuff. So I would just be like asking her, like, stuff about it, and mm-hmm. she'd be like, Yeah, I feel the same way. So I was like, Okay, good, I'm not that weird. But now that I look back, yeah. I'm like, Maybe it's a family disease. I don't know. Yeah, the, <laughs> the, the, like, the, this all family, all they're too horny. <laughs> I would say, and normally I wouldn't say anyone's too horny, but too horny. Sorry. Uh, Jamie. It's not a bad thing. So let's it's talk annoying. about, I want to talk about day one with the divorce again. Mm. Is there anything you want to know? Ashley out. Love you, baby. Yeah. Love you. Love you. So say somebody's going through something similar that you have went through and I have went through, but you specifically, 27 years. Mm-hmm. Day one. They're looking... Their their life's over. They they don't want anything to do with anything anymore. They want to end their life. Is there something you can tell them? This is their day one, 
and they're just like looking for a reason to kill themselves. They're typing in love into YouTube and they see this video. What would you tell that person? I would say it takes a lot of time and a lot of um, self-reflection. Don't, um, don't beat yourself up about it because it's not necessarily all you. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know your point. You know your part in it. You've taken some sort of part in it. Um, but as much as I went through wanting to end my life over this, um, my, my kids, the 27 years that I had, I mean, I really don't have any regrets when it comes to the marriage. We had a good marriage. It was just, it ended badly. It ended real badly. Um, I would love to have had a better relationship with my ex-husband. I would have rather it ended differently. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I'm still me, and I'm going to be okay and just one day at a time. And you're going to have some bad days where it's just going to suck, and um, the holidays are hard. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like it's like this year. I'm like, okay, I'm going to put a tree up. I watched every Christmas movie there ever was made, you know? I mean, for for no other reason than I was just gravitated to it. So organically, I think, and energy-wise, I think that I've come out of it. I've come to the point where um, I might not necessarily be ready to date, mm -hmm. but I am learning to be okay with myself, and mm -hmm. they will get to be okay with it after a while. You know, you just keep going. Mm -hmm. It's not the end of the world. And and the one thing that we told our boys when the day that we told them that we were going to get a divorce is that your dad and I are still here. Mm -hmm. Nobody died. Nobody's sick. Nobody's going to die anytime soon. You know, we're we're still here for you. We still love you. And um, and I guess in a way I had to say that to myself mm -hmm. because. I truly just missed the life that I thought I was going to have. And it's taken me that long to get over the fact that, okay, what I thought my life was going to be is not going to be. Mm -hmm. I'm one paycheck from living under a bridge, but it'll be my bridge. And I'm okay with that I, because I take nothing from him. I, I'm on my own. I do my own thing. And um, there's something very freeing about that. And um, I'm okay with that. Because lots of people have it a lot worse than I do. Mm -hmm. A lot worse than I do. It's just, it was just a bad, bad, you know, bad experience that, you know, I'll be okay. Now, do you think there was, let's go with three things that saved you. Like one song, one person, and one experience. My boy saved me. So that's one thing. That's totally. That's it? There was no song that. There's been no song. There's been no, I mean, the boys, anytime I think I get too depressed and I think, you know, I'm done. Mm -hmm. I mean, what's the point of me being here? Is that I know there are three people on this universe that would blame themselves. Because they would. They would take the blame on themselves if I were not here. Mm -hmm. Because, okay, well, I didn't do enough for her. I wasn't there for her. I wasn't, you know. Mm -hmm. And I would never, I would, I don't want ever to leave that with them. Mm -hmm. So I'm fortunate that I have those three because mm -hmm. they keep me going. And every time I think, oh, they'd be better off if I wasn't around. They won't have to worry about me and all that. I know that they would blame themselves. So I don't want them to ever feel that. So you're living for them? Basically. But I, but, but for myself too. Mm -hmm. Little by little, I get back to where I was before I got married. Mm -hmm. It's taken a really long time, but, um, you know, I'm remembering from people. It's funny how people on Facebook, people I went to grade school with, mm -hmm. um, I had a, a, a friend that I've known since second grade. He called me. Mm -hmm. He's like, I just want you to know you always have a one-way ticket, airline ticket. Come back home. Mm -hmm. We'll take care of you. And just knowing that there's people like that, that, you know, like, wow. I mean, he's mm. got his own family. He's got his own issues, all that. But he's like, I've known you. I love you. You're a great person. Mm. Just come back. 
we'll take care of you. Mm -hmm. And I think, well, I don't really want that. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm 54 years old. I should be able to take care of myself. And I mean, I have a college degree. I'm, I mean, it's harder to get a job at mm -hmm. 54, but you know, I'm not, I'm not dead yet. Mm. <laughs> You're not I, knock, I, knock, I'm knocking I'm on heaven's, heaven's door. door. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> See, Tremaine, I told you I'm a fucking angel of a voice. Yeah. There we go. Tremaine, do you have anything you want to promote, sir? No. No, nothing? Not so, yet. Not yet. Not yet. At the end of this episode, I want to let you know that between now and January, February, January, February, March, at the end of March, we're going to do, we're going to, I've been drinking for a while. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. Everybody knows your, that I've seen this podcast. I've been drinking your craft beer too, so. Everybody knows that seen this podcast. I get drunk every episode. Anyway, <laughs> we do a giveaway every quarterly. So at the end of this quarter, so March, at the end of March, the person with the most likes on their video is going to get $200 and come back. After that year, so at the end of 2021, they're all going to be entered in to a contest for five hundred dollars, mm -hmm. so you could win potentially seven hundred dollars for getting the most yeah. likes on your YouTube. So all you have to do is promote yourself and your own story, and get the most likes on your I'm own. I'm trying. I'm trying. No, 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 no. I'm not telling you. I'm not saying you're doing a bad job. You haven't even done anything yet. <laughs> I'm just saying we want to give you money and we want to give the rest of the world money. This is just for you to share your own story. For those people that may be like me and you day one or even Tremaine day one where we were all, you know, we were very sad the first day of our ex leaving us. Mm -hmm. So this is just a way to promote our own stories so those people may be able to see this to possibly save their life Absolutely. in their own way. So this, again, is about you, your story, and anyone else that is feeling sad. Mm -hmm. We want you to come here and listen because there is life after love and love after love. Mm -hmm. I did find Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And people will continue to find love after love. It's tough and it's an adjustment period, but we've all found it. And that's the bottom line because Lightning Bear says so. Because I'm fucking bad, bro. I'm a fucking bear. <laughs> Big bear, bro. <laughs> I hope I find my ash. Thank you again for watching that YouTube clip. If you yeah. others like it, remember that like and subscribe button. If you have questions for us, go to our website and you can find our email, lovingthemode at gmail.com. You can also see other YouTube clips, highlights, previews to other clips, and behind the scenes features. If you want to listen to our podcast, go to anywhere where you listen to your podcast. And you can find Love and Then What There.